Hello. 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 Hello and good evening. I'm Johnny, your DM, and I'm here with Brad, Hello. Christine, Becky, Ryan, hey, Sean, hello, and Dan. Hello. Uh, so, how is everyone this week? Good. I had a really, really weird dream last night. I won the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. I don't, and... know, I don't know how that's going to relate to today's game. Uh, was I don't it with my lovely horse? <laughs> is that a deep cut that I shouldn't know because I'm too it's, young? It's a Father Ted Father reference, Ted's. which oh, you might not know because you're too yeah, young. Yeah, yeah, I'm too young. Yeah, sorry, Dan. Oh, um, really? Uh, is Father Ted yeah. that old? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm probably very dated. No, oh, it's, it's very not. dated, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the late 90s were a glorious time. Okay, I will hear nothing bad said about them. <laughs> well, the writer for it got uh, vilified, didn't he, recently? I mean, yeah, it's it's a different era now. Things are pe- <laughs> I think it's safe to say that some older people are saying things that are making people unhappy, and that's probably best left there. Yeah. Uh, so talking we of... like all sorts of engagement because social media doesn't discriminate. So if you want to be uh, against anyone, please just put it in the chat and put it on our social media. <laughs> what? We, would, we might delete it, but we'll value the traction that it takes us on our. <laughs> That no. is no. Are we not all I'm in not, the group? No, no. This no. worst. No. No. Voted against. Sure the, any publicity characters. is good publicity. Style <laughs> is uh, that in fact is the late nineties. Mm. So yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and you know that it might breed a hate group. And speaking of hate groups, Dan. Oh yes, <laughs> the anti kale league has been established. <laughs> oh, God. After our um, the kale controversy continues. Who'd have known, uh, Becky, that you'd have started something so amazing? Um, but recently, some of our, um, I'm going to call them super fans, um, mm. <laughs> have started up an anti kale league. In And they're also, the other side, our kale lovers, are creating a list of recipes for me to cook kale with so that I can enjoy kale to its fullest. It's really That's, weird that you will, the, you will enjoy this direction it. this has gone. I will, do you know what? I'll probably one day, because obviously I eat on stream every, every week, <laughs> which I apologise, but I'm a dad. And that's my only that's my only evening sustenance. <laughs> on um, the toilet one, or on the stream. That's the only time that's exactly, you get a meal in. Yeah. Correct. And I will eat kale on stream at some point, I think, if I get some good recipes. That's my Can that's somebody my just vow. tell me well, we'd I obviously would like some good recipes from anyone listening, but can somebody um just tell me here and maybe on the chat what you like about kale? I mean just just what you like. I just need to know what you like. Becky's about the expert, it. aren't you, Becky? See, I just think it's a really versatile vegetable to add to stuff. It's so good for you and it genuinely enhances, I, I promise you. It um so if you've ever made col cannon, which is basically where you get mashed potato, you add in either kale or cabbage, you add in spring onion. Honestly, adding the greens oh, okay. is what lifts it to the next level. And it makes it so much healthier. So you can eat more mashed potato. What is okay. not I to love like? mashed potato. I can, I can see that working. It's okay. certainly cruciferous as well. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. Actually, you're going to have to explain that <laughs> one to me. Um, if, cruciferous, uh, if... high in fibre. Yeah. <laughs> If all of our if all of our lovely listeners want to give us recipes for uh, for kale based dishes, you can find us on on all socials. It's Blood Song Party on Twitter, Blood and Song on Instagram. You can find us on our Facebook page as well, and you know send us those recipes. And I'm sure whoever moderates those will take a look at them. And <laughs> you better hope that they're a kale lover, otherwise they'll delete those tweets. But if not, they will uh, post them somewhere for Dan to munch on stream. I just love that we're making kale the new marmite. <laughs> Kale the new Marmite. There's the first That's merchandise. The, it was yeah. the original Marmite. Oh, like, what it is... grew out of the ground. It was Marmite before Marmite was cool. What does you know, what was... does Kale with Marmite taste like? Oh, I don't oh. I'm not sure I want imagine. to try that one. Yeah, so I want to know. Yeah, even I'm not sure I'd attempt. <laughs> Could you stick it in your cold cannon and make it work? Right, look, I'm going to try that. <laughs> I'm going to try it and let you all know. Cool. I'll, ex- I'll experiment. Uh, talking that... of experimenting, Brad, your moustache. <laughs> it's it's going well. Um, I would say I'm almost there with the moustache. Um, so a little bit more serious note, both Sean and I are uh, doing Movember for mm-hmm. men's health this month. Um, so I've gone with the English gentleman's moustache, uh, which is almost there. And Sean is going mm-hmm. for the lovely handlebar. I'm going for the sort of Miami Vice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> to try and just to offset Brad's, I wanted to go just moustache, but because Brad's rocking his Selic, um, uh, sort of uh, wannabe, um, I thought I'd go for the for a bit of a, a Latin vibe. 
for our Latin listeners. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 for men's physical and mental health as well. And and I think a long time ago, it, 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 you know, when I first learned about Movember, it was about um, prostate cancer and other sorts of things. Um, but I've I've found um, it. it I, I'm really glad that it's expanded to things like men's mental health as well. Um, and we want the, this stream to be a positive place, a happy place, a safe space. Um, but I thought that, and I've talked it through with everyone beforehand, um, but uh, I've been supporting my fiance this week particularly because uh, sadly one of her um, family members took his own life this week. So I think it's important um, not to, um, to uh, dwell on the sadness because there is sadness in it, obviously. It's, it's inherent in there, but what can we do to make that positive? What can we do in the lead up to Christmas um, and the new year and in this difficult holiday period for, for many people, um, how can we look at the men and women around us and uh, reach out to them or support them in a way that we may not have originally thought of beforehand? How can we be a little bit more open and mindful? So I'm hoping to um, to to move on from that and, and hopefully we can we can all take that and support the people around us. Well, something that has been very positive and brought a lot of joy this week is and this is my slightly second, slightly awkward uh, segue in three weeks. <laughs> no, but we are, I appreciate it though. Thanks. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, um, <laughs> which uh, has it came out last week. It came out the day after the stream. And uh, whilst I'm gutted that my physical book won't be here for a while yet, because the physical is now in England, we have been pouring over the PDF and things on D and D Beyond. And wow, is it cool! There is so much good stuff in there. Um, I personally am loving the changes to character creation especially the reassigning of stats, uh, stats, the additional bonuses you can add or swap uh, features you can swap out, and the change to uh, race and origin. I think that's really, really that's long super overdue, exciting. It? That's yeah. long overdue. Yeah. yeah. Really good step in the right direction. Anyone else seen anything in there that they particularly love? Oh, yeah. Well, I... Go on. Go, go, go on, no, you first. Okay, you first. Uh, well, all right. Well, because uh, you all know I am ridiculously new, especially compared to you guys in, in this so um and i went straight for an artificer <laughs> well, went, oh you're brave <laughs> so um and i really appreciated um the tasha's cauldron because it does clarify a lot of things um about the artificer it sort of simplifies the language of how it describes things particularly things like infusions um and clarifies the subclasses a bit better um, there's a couple of new spells, which is always fun. I mean, Tasha's caustic, caustic pet brew. Anyone? That looks like exciting. Um, <laughs> uh, shooting thirty foot of poison acid in front of you—that's got to be great. <laughs> That's, I didn't know you had such a dark side, Christine. But, mate, come on, it's imagination. <laughs> this is it, you know. Uh, but yeah, no, I've, I've, I've appre- uh, I've only looked at the artificer at the moment, so I haven't really. And I probably will never really appreciate how much it's clearing up other aspects because I haven't spent as long as you guys have uh, working with the with the old, let's say the old mechanics. You know, you never get rid of any old versions, do you? From what I understand, they're always um, there. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think um, I think it's great. There's a, a literal a box under my bed, which I've Come hidden on. from my wife because Where's she's made, told me to throw it out, <laughs> and it's got all all the fourth edition books. She told me to throw out. I can't never get quite bring them. myself to throw away, but I'm never going to use them again. Well, so if you ever can consider there. getting rid of them, let me know. I will rescue them and keep them safe for you. <laughs> uh, I've actually deep cut been. I've recently got a entire stack of uh, three third and three point five edition PDFs oh. that I've been reading through for just extra material. And whew, did they simplify things for fifth? Uh, yes, absolutely. Which is something I think Tashas has done throwback. brilliantly. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice to get things streamlined. Uh, clarifying things within D&D Beyond as well, that online integration is just so useful. Uh, D&D Beyond, for people who don't know, is a, a fantastic website that we run our character sheets through. Um, it's one of two bits of software like Foundry that we use. Foundry is um, an online virtual tabletop where we can put battle maps and move tokens because we can't all be in the same room with actual miniatures and proper nice uh, real battle maps which is a shame because at least three of us hate the other lot that's basically (laughs) but who you'll have to guess who who. you'll have to guess everybody knows i'm one of them but uh but who are the other two yeah definitely not a sponsor but you could be (laughs) yes well let's not get too ahead of ourselves uh right (laughs) that's done that's done that's done Ah, if that's it everyone Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. anything else to add shall we uh it's time to jump in roll the vid
Hi. We're all back in. Hey. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of Blood and Song. Here we are. Then let's have a quick recap. So our adventurers have finally made their way to Cinderbane, a city in the south west of Chinella. They've been escorting uh, the Presidius of Redwater, the town, they, the village they started in, who'd been ill. They managed to get to the city, which was uh, sort of blackened and scarred by some historic fire. And they found a magical hospital, which was run by Inmara Darian, uh, Daryl, sorry, Inmara Daryl, who uh, attempted to heal uh, Celia and wasn't having much luck. In between this, other exciting events happened. Um, Ripper, Lack, and Seed took a little side trip to the temple of Aluria, the goddess of life, and Ripper informed the rather cranky old uh, underpriestess there that she that he wanted to take an oath to Aluria, and he was told to come back in the morning. Uh, sadly fan favourites uh, uh, auntie, uncle uh, were stolen granny. and granny all three mules, in fact two of them had been bought pretty much that day or the day just before just that day, haggled yeah. really hard for them yeah, yeah, gone, stolen and no one's quite sure why Phaser also mischievously helped out a thief who was trying to escape from the uh, legionnaires we don't know he was a him. thief, we just knew he was scared we do now. We know so, it's a theme Yeah, yeah. Now. it's a little bit of a plot twist, isn't it? How do you feel now? He was scared. I didn't know. Oh, now this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be. Actions Who knows? Have Who knows? He, Taser, Taser Taser he had three theme, miniature right? donkeys and two miniature carts stuck down his pockets. <laughs> 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 Who knows? Did he steal our donkeys? I guess we'll Bastard. never know. Uh, so you were given, um, Inmara asked you to investigate more about the sickness. She showed you a noble who'd been suffering from the same thing, uh, who was tossing and turning. He wasn't quite as comatose as uh, Celia had been. His name was Darius Ventus. You were given a rite of passage to enter his abode. You were told that it would be legally okay but not necessarily legal. Uh, apparently Inmara has some pull in the city, enough to get this off, but this doesn't give you any kind of badge of office. You, uh, it was just become evening and you just stepped out into the street, leaving the hospital. What would you like to do? Oh, I believe we were trying to find some refuge for the night. Weren't we recommended a inn? Um, I can't remember where it is though. To the um, merchant's quarters. So, yes, you are uh, advised to head to Coin Row, which is the merchant's quarter at the top, the trader's quarter, sorry, where um, there are several inns, all very reputable. Yeah, I think Sixsmith would round people up and say, right, let's let's all get a good night's sleep. You can't function properly without a good night's sleep. So head towards the merchant's we quarter, I think, if everyone agrees. Yeah, I think we also found out it was the Brotherhood of Ash that stole our donkeys, wasn't it? Well, probably, from the Legionnaires. That's the right. Oh, oh, what, them, them Ashy boys? Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about them. Um, Lack looks longingly towards where the Brotherhood of Ash are as they as they walk towards Coin Row. Um, Sixsmith almost like dragging him like a petulant child away from a candy store. There is a chain of command we must go through first, and then after that, maybe we'll let each other off the leash. I mean, I said candy store, but I meant sweet store because I'm not American. Mm. it's fine so you uh leave the forum and you head north what well, kind of north east and you head back into coin row where again these sort of uh slightly grayed dirty looking buildings are standing with these open window shops at the bottom floor just selling uh hot food and drinks and you manage to find several reputable looking t uh, inns um, there's uh, some look a little bit more expensive some look like they're just gonna be a hostel for the night so it's up to you which ones you would like to try and approach I am poor so I'll probably go over to the uh, the hostel oh, I mean yeah, you read my all of our capital is in those donkeys so currently we have no, oh, no money. That, that's not strictly true that's the money we um we took off of uh, yes. Jack Sparrow that's <laughs> All of my money. Okay, um, my apologies. Um, <laughs> but I could shout you for an evening, if it helps. Uh, I still well, have some that of my inheritance. Well, that would be very handy if you mm -hmm. want to put me off in the expensive room. But I am perfectly happy with 
a hostel. So I think Faisal wouldn't know what to do with luxury. <laughs> She's got a simple life. So um, she's uh, she's happy to go. Okay, I mean, I don't mind. Yeah, I'm right hostile too. Yeah, okay. Sue's in a similar financial position. Is uh, <laughs> hostel is necessary. <laughs> so the one you come across is just above a bakery and it has the name of Smoky Hearth. Ah, you... uh, sounds very inviting. Lovely. You walk up the narrow stairs to the side of the building and you knock on the wooden door which is opened uh, by a fairly nondescript looking um, middle-aged woman. He says, yes, can I help you? Good evening, my darling. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five of us need a room, please. Right. Uh, Six. Six, sorry. <laughs> you didn't count yourself, Ripper. Huh? Yeah, I did, well, you know, somebody am only looking at you lot, you know. <laughs> I've only got one hand, did I? No, I don't, I've got two. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, Sorry, one room for all of you, or...? Oh, I mean, if you've got one room with six bunks in it, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, it's hostel after the all, you know? Yes, I know. And uh, she walks back and looks through the ledger, and... Uh, yes, yes, okay. Uh, but for six of you, it's going to be two silver each. So that could be do 12 that. silver, or <clears> one gold, two. I don't mind either way. Yeah, that is acceptable, and I hand over two silver and walk straight in. Mm, I hand over two silver as well. All right, Tobias, hold up, hold up, hold up. Yes. Okay. We um, have a big decision between all of us here right now. Who's top bunks? Who's bottom bunks? Right. It's very important. <laughs> now we've got a, we've got a levy up I against a couple care, of things. If you're like, if you're likely to get, if you're likely to to have a couple of drinks, right? You're a bottom bunk guy, right? Trust me, I've been there. Top bunk after a few drinks, falling <laughs> off. Okay, Not worth walking it. Up the right? stairs. <laughs> Uh, and turn to the rest of the party. Right, well, I'm sure he'll probably go bottom bunk, when he. So that's one bottom bunk down. The rest of you's got to decide who wants top bunk, who wants bottom bunk. Well, I'm unlikely to overindulge in beverages, so does that put me on a top? I believe it does. It's one top bunk for you. Um, how easy is it to access the top? And you're three foot two? Bottom you've bunk got bo You've then. got a bottom yeah, bunk. Um, <laughs> so that leaves uh, tops for... For us, for us three, right? Uh, Ripper. Oh no, there's one more bottom bunk left. Uh, I, I think my brother should have the bottom bunk. Huh? Yeah, uh, you know, you know, I could make it to the top of, of the bunk, but I don't want to. I'd, I'd prefer to stay on the bottom I'll, bunk. I'll take top bunk on my brother's bed. Huh? Okay, cool. All right then. Glad that's all sorted. Thank you very much, Mistress. There's the rest of the silver and everything like that. She's completely ignoring you now, and she's just back. <laughs> Thing legend <laughs> just points up the stairs and you tell up some uh, narrow spindly wooden stairs to the third floor where you find i mean describing this room as dire would be a disservice to actually dire places it's near squalid it has far uh, six bunk beds in them and the bunks are very precarious <laughs> Uh, they're, they're rags uh, I say rags because they're definitely rags rather than duvets they look and smell like they were possibly cleaned mm, a thousand years ago and there is just a wooden bucket that has been emptied but not cleaned since the last people were here may I cast prestigitation on the bedding and said bucket <laughs> yep. to, uh, to clean some things so as you get out one of your gadgets and fiddle with it and this magic cleaning energy comes out, this dust just kind of sticks to it, a bit like a magnet. And you go over, open the window and just drop the dust out and it just falls. Um, and he says, Oi! From uh, below as <laughs> someone's you. clearly just hit. <laughs> Ripper, which, which bed are you taking? Uh, I assume you'd want a bottom bunk because you don't care. So I'll sleep in the one above you, mate. Unless uh, you want a top bunk. I... I was actually suggesting that we don't sleep in the same bed. What's that? Well, have you seen how structurally unsafe this wooden it's... framing is? Someone so what you're saying... Up, I can, I what I'm saying up. is I do not wish to be crushed by you during the night when I sleep. Oh, I've heard <laughs> that a couple of times. Don't you worry about that. Uh, all right. Well, you can take the top bunk then. You know, you seem pretty light on your feet. Sure, I'm not bothered. All right, fair <laughs> enough. Um, Steed, if you if you are able to to give me a a, a boost, I I don't mind being on the top bunk. I don't mind. 
So are we sharing a bag? I think so. Isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah, Seed's more than happy Sorry. if you Sorry. if you want them to literally just give you like a, a boost to your foot to get you <laughs> up to the top, yeah, no problem at all. <laughs> Sorry, that suddenly became Enid Blyton then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this be fun. <laughs> uh, just for the sake of it, Phaser, can you make me an athletics check with advantage because Cedar's helping? I just want to see how easily okay. you get to the top bunk. <laughs> oh, so the grace of the journey. This was not. This was not what jo uh, Johnny just probably planned us having having go to sleep. But like I know, staying in many. Well, a hostel, I got eighteen, so the joke's on you. <laughs> many, no, many, your, many your hostel. The like the arguments for top and bottom bunk are rife. Absolutely rife. Okay. I, I so seem to with... remember I won the Amsterdam one as well. Yes, there you go. <laughs> with uh, a fair amount of ease and seeds help, you do scramble up to the top bunk with a Thanks. decent amount of grace. Thanks very much. Nack, um, may I speak to you um, over by the bathroom? And I just ask uh, <laughs> Lack to Lack just come to the over bucket. to the side with me so that we can stand <laughs> near the bucket, basically, okay. just to have a bit of privacy. Um, and Six says... Uh, like this, uh, these are very uh, spirited, very uh, enjoyable companions. But I wonder how you're feeling, how long we want to travel with them, uh, how far and uh, for how long? I don't know, um, Six. I, I didn't wonder, I wondered why we even met them. But then I, I, I remember Mother saying, you know, take each day as it comes and, um, and take the journey. The journey is more important than the goal, huh? So maybe um, yeah, and if you see the goal, kick it in. That's what she she always that was, added. I like that game. I really love that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She loved that game, didn't she? No, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I I don't know. I see, um. Let's see how the wind takes us, huh? Yeah, I yeah, know okay, that's okay. not. I know yeah, that's yeah. not you. I know that's not you. But um. Yeah, you know, maybe... I'll, I'll go where you go. You know, if you're you're having fun. Um, I am. You know, it's, it's, I am having I'm having fun. fun too. Yeah, it's good. I am. It's good. Okay, I'm I'm probably going to use this now. So. I'll just turn around, yeah? <laughs> thank you, thank around. you. Okay. Do I make you roll for it? No, it's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> defecation roll, please. And uh, what would you like to do next? Let's get out of that. I'm going to... I just. I think Rip is just going to go to sleep, you know? He's he's getting excited for the, for the, for the morning. You know, he wants to get nice... Uh, but, Long no actually no, have I have I told the rest of the party that's what I'm doing? Not yet. I haven't, have I? No. no. Oh, um so uh Ripper and f oh, sorry, not Ripper, that's me. Ripper, that's me, hey. Eh? So I just love talking to myself sometimes. Uh Six Smith and Phaser, I'm actually gonna be doing an oath tomorrow morning and be swearing an oath to Luria. Um, bright and early, uh sunrise. And um I'd actually love it if you guys would would be there will come with me you know bear witness oh, yeah. sorry what's yeah. an oath is it a big man that is very stupid an oath no an oath like you know we get on a knee and you pledge fealty to somebody ah an oath ah, yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, one, yeah 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 that one yeah that one yeah you you haven't invited me so i assume you want me to go scout out the uh, house then. oh no 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 of course of course um of course you know i just i just was i was waiting oh, okay. to get to you right, right because I, I know how much you love a bit of the dressage of you know being in the military it's uh it's you know it's it's come, you know i'd love for you to come along as well you know uh, okay yes thank you um Okay. I'll it was wait. the whole. It was you know. You know what? It was the whole bed comment. All right. I just. I'm a little bit still hurt about it. You know. But you know, bygones and bygones. May and I well, just you know, you're, to... you're an eight foot man made of muscle. So, I mean, that's true. That's true. No, that's probably the big <laughs> best compliment he's got all year. Um, <laughs> may I ask about the uh, the structure of tomorrow? Uh, the timings and uh, what we are wanting to do. Yeah, probably want to get up about. Uh, you know, uh, an hour before, get some crunches in, um, and then head on over, and then we're ready for sunrise. And then after sunrise. that, you know, we'll just see what the day takes us, isn't it? No, but well, we'll, we'll, I would love to do that, but afterwards we do have to go to the uh, to the slums, to the house. Yes, we'll investigate and then the I... house afterwards, <clears throat> yes. And then, yeah. um, Octavius, I wonder if you would accompany me at least uh, yourself to speak to the guard of the town, maybe inform them about our missing property um i mean i can do that yes it depends what happens at the house but sure 
How late is it, Johnny? Currently, I would say, ooh, um, 7pm. Okay. Lack of walk over to Seed. Um, Seed? Um, yes? We happen to be in a hostel tavern. There must be a place to um, grab a drink. Oh, I really think other people should hear your songs. They're so beautiful that maybe... Um, would you like to come down and grab a drink and we can? Um, you could sing some of your songs for them? I mean, I would be honoured as long as they wanted to hear them. They're perfectly normal human songs, so of course we'd want to hear them. Absolutely. I can, I can definitely do some human entertainment. The bard I travelled with used to do that in taverns a lot. Then I'd love to hear you do more. Of course. And he sort of bounces on, his, on the balls of his feet. And, uh, anyone else coming? Uh, I, could, I could do with a nightcap, you know. Yeah. I'd like to go to the bar and see you there. We've just been travelling and we've been fighting and we haven't really had any... I mean, I've had fun, but why don't we have a little bit of fun, fun? Um... I'd love, I'd love to join you, but I've had this amazing idea for something that I, I, I'd like to build, um, and it's been in my itching at the back of my brain for a really long time, and uh, and and I, I think I've worked it out. I, I've been drawing sketches, okay. so I, I think that's what I'm going to spend part of my evening doing. Okay. Uh, I mean, they say, one drink, one drink, why not? Will it? You know? No, but five Said that might. before. <laughs> 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 oh, you monks and your brewing. You know what mother used to say, six Smith? Have one pint. Have ten pints. Exactly. She, she was, loved ten pints. She was a little she? bit of an alcoholic. She loved actually. ten it pints. It was either one but... pint, ten pints. Mm. Why? Why Never would you bother so. having five pints? You know, it made no sense. One pint, okay. You can if, then go and drive if you're a going car. Going to do drink, do drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Faiza, if you uh, have time, uh, one of those spears, you know. Oh, you throw it and then it comes oh, back to you. Yeah. One goes by your head. <laughs> Just back to my hand. Yeah, once, yeah, anyway. once I've made something Don't once. Don't break the I, hostel. <laughs> I find it, I, I'm, I'm not sure I could make another one. Uh, you know, I, 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 once I've made something once, that's uh, I move on. Octavius, you want to come join I'm us for a drink? To the sword, you know. I will have a water and enjoy the music, sure. I mean, I'm daring to see a smile on your face. I ain't seen one since we met you. Well, <laughs> um, you may dare uh, a little longer then. I thought I saw him smile a little before he turned into a big bird and flew away. You know, I think he liked that very much. But we never really addressed that. That was bloody brilliant. Wasn't it? It it's was very something, impressive. Something from the north that uh, the legions have picked up in order to uh, Honestly, this north sounds be more fantastic. diverse. Ah. Was it every member of your uh, team, your uh, battalion or, or whatever size mm. of team? Everybody had this power? No. It's uh, a few scouts have it. It's very much in its early stages, I think. I've not seen many. Seems very handy. Very impressive. Okay, so with this you start walking and talking as you head back down two flights of rickety stairs. Um, as you're walking out, you hear the landlady just shout, uh, Doors at 11! Locked briefly! And then just chucks a kind of key number at you and sort of grab your token and wander down and you find that this place doesn't have taverns in the traditional sense that uh, you know a, a house that you go into it's very much tavernas it's outside so they are holes in the wall that sell alcohol and they have benches uh, around the outside they have hanging lanterns that are lit in fact, as you're sitting down outside one, you notice as you look up that the lanterns themselves aren't um, gas powered. They are filled with what look like amethyst crystals just glowing, kind of pulsing gently. And so it lends this kind of slightly purplish air and light to the um, venue. And especially when combined with the kind of grey buildings, it's a little disconcerting. They've got vines hanging overhead on a trellis and say these long tables that uh, are you can sit at and there's a small barbecue at the side where people are bringing over just various appetites. Johnny, my actual heart is aching for that right now. <laughs> you just described something that made me as Dan sad that I can't have that right now. It made Johnny <laughs> start to salivate and get distracted. <laughs> Might go get a beer, you know? <laughs> And then Ripper says, I think I might go get a beer, you know. 
wonder where you're channeling Ripper from, Ryan. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's somewhere deep inside. You know, it's role play, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> Not role live. Um, and so you walk up to. Well, what would, what do you do? You come in. This place is available to you. Mm, hello, fine owner of this establishment. You kind of see several waiters and waitresses running around giving drinks. There doesn't seem to be, you know, there's not, bizarrely, one person there polishing a tankard for once. Oh, this is all new. Uh, Garson? <laughs> this, a young boy walks over. He's probably only about 12 years old. He goes, yeah, all right, I can help. Uh, right, one... Uh, who else? Who else wants an ale? Oh, there's oh, you, one, yeah. Water. You're please. having a water, aren't you? Yeah. Right. What, water. Uh, you don't want yeah. to drink the water around here, mate. I'm getting a runs. Then milk, if you have it. Milk. You don't want to drink the milk around here, mate. <laughs> get the runs. I will no, you then... get the runs. I will have get nothing the Fanny to drink Adams. then. <laughs> we got some grape juice. Uh, I will have that. Then that is acceptable. Right, grape juice. All right, one grape juice. Uh, can I just uh, ask, um, is the grape juice wine by any chance? Uh, we've got wine as well. Yeah, yeah, if you want some wine. I just wanted to make sure they were different. That's all. Okay. All right, grape juice. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, seeds, ale. Um, yes, ale. Yes, I will have an ale. All right, five ales. Oh, I can count this time. Five ales. And, can I just uh, check, one... um, what sort of ale do you have uh, uh, by the barrel? Uh, hang on. And he runs off and you see him talking to a uh, waitress. He runs back and goes, yeah, right. So it's just called Brown. Oh, we don't uh, really. Can I incite this child to see if he's actually a waiter at this? You certainly can make an insight <laughs> check. I mean, do we even have table service here? Oh, Is no. this even this type of establishment? That's 10. This child seems very strange to you, but no stranger than most of the denizens you've seen of the Empire, or the Republic, I should say. Um, May I ask a young child, uh, does it have, a, is it uh, smoky or oaky? Is it nutty or is it fruity? Is it, I uh, just want to know uh, uh, what I'm buying. May I have a small sample? Yeah, we don't do samples. Uh, well, ale's not really a chinella thing, you see. So we import it and it's, it's just brown, isn't it? All tastes the same. What's your local, your local drink in Chanel then? Well, wine. Oh, didn't know that. Is it that. Uh, have some wine okay then. or uh, smoky uh, wine? Is it fruity? Is it nutty? Uh, what's <laughs> the... Uh... Oh, right. It's red. But it doesn't matter. You're just going to put a chilli in it anyway. So... <laughs> hey, come on. I don't want to say it. Don't say it in front of him. Oh, sorry, it'll make, sorry. It'll make it sound like they don't do good wine here. Right, so one grape juice, five beers and two wines. No, 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 no. Five wines. And one five ales and one grape juice. Five ales, five wines and one grape juice. I wanna, I listen, no, listen, wait, let, listen, kid, let's let's start over again, right? One grape juice. Let's How are we paying, nah. by the way, may I ask? Are we all going to pay individually or do, should we go on together? Should we start a tab? That's a good point. We'll probably yeah, start a, a tab. At the end. So yeah, one great. one grape juice and then five wines because lack is the local delicacy, right? Might as well, you know, they say, mm. when in Cinderbane, don't get burnt. But also try the wine. Okay. That is exactly what it says on the town motto. Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, well read. Uh, right, be right back then. And he kind of scuttles off. And as he scuttles off, you notice that one of his trouser legs is much shorter than the other, a little bit frayed, a little bit warm. And as he comes back and he's wobbling with this tray, uh, uh, not kind of terracotta jug on it with these, again, small terracotta um, gla glasses, mugs, and kind of sets it down. And he sniffs and you just see a little bit of something disappear back up and he kind of just wipes his face and goes right uh so did you say you wanted to start a tab now nah, we'll just pay this one off kid right uh, 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 three silver please yeah i'm gonna hand that over okay he uh, takes money and he hand runs into the building one silver to him as he leaves thank you for your time young man oh yeah thank you very much pockets it very clearly and then runs off to the next table. Uh, I'd like to propose a toast to making new friends, a successful journey, 
And I'm really sorry, Fraser, that you couldn't be here to see the wonderful pottery work on these cups. Isn't it fantastic? Like, oh, you would have loved anyway. that, yeah. Anyway, cheers, guys. Cheers. The cheers. Cheers. So you take a drink of this uh, deep wine that's got this, sort of, yeah, and oh, it tastes of purple is the best way of describing it. You'd kind of had gooseberry wine a little bit further up north, but this uh, uh, old road, old crossroads down here, it, it's... It has got a smoky flavour, like the ash and the uh, being this close to the blighted waste has slightly impacted the uh, flavour profile of the soil. Um, and Dick Smith is very happy with this. He's very happy. <laughs> Octavius, can you make me a perception check? Oh, In fact, no, you don't even need to. Your passive would have picked this up. <laughs> they did not give you grape juice. It's wine, is it? It's just wine. Yeah. I, d- <laughs> I took a sip and noticed and immediately... Immediately shifted it over to the middle of the table. Uh, Seed, I'm pretty sure you can find somewhere around it to play some music, right? I can certainly go and find out. Okay, Seed, just uh, make me a perception check, please. Okay, that is 11. That's good enough. So as you're looking around, you see that this place is slightly enclosed by the trellises. There's um, what can only be described as kind of a flat stage on the floor, just a white cleared area that's uh, got this kind of white cloth on it with a orange and blue twining pattern around the outside. And you see someone kind of walk on, uh, walk on wearing this wonderful toga and he's got this long strung instrument, a bit like a bazooki. And uh, it's got 12 tuning pegs and he just spends it just tuning it so for a moment you're not sure if he's playing or tuning but it looks like he's tuning and then he starts uh singing and it's not very good it's it's awful it's the sort of bad that every person who's in a pub at an open mic night goes anyone could do that i could do that and then someone says Go on then, and then they get up and sing Wonderwall. And uh, it's exactly that sort of vibe. You kind of expect almost like mandolin-esque music to be in this location. You do not get that. But he finishes, the patrons just look round. There's sort of two polite, way from the table he's with. He goes, thanks, thanks, thanks. And then just walks off, leaving this little area open. Okay, so Seed seeing him leave the stage area uh, is going to try and sidle up to him to start with uh, before he kind of sits himself back down. Um, excuse me. Yeah? I'm so sorry to bother you, but um, I was wondering if you know what one has to do in order to play music at this establishment. Oh, uh, well, see that bit of white cloth? Yeah. Got to stand on it. And then you sing. Oh, excellent. Yeah, well, we'll be seeing you. And he walks back off. Thank you, very helpful. He says nothing, he completely ignores you. Okay, Cedar's going to make their way, just, yeah, just go straight over to the to the white cloth um, and kind of take out the drum uh, and sort of in a similar way to what you guys have seen before, there's definitely a sense of Seed is starting to copy something that they've seen so again you sort of noticeably notice them shift a little bit um their stance is pretty confident uh if you were present in the temple you might recognize the fact that yet again there's an air of slightly middle-aged man about this uh but this time it's middle-aged man if he got up in a pub to sing uh so (laughs) this is how it goes uh so so he says Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this piece of human entertainment. Firstly, let me start off by saying how nice it is to be here in your town. Secondly, (laughs) I have to ask you, are you all having a good time? Yay! I cannot hear you. I said, are you all having a good time? (laughs) As you're saying this, the audience have gone from sort of ignoring you because clearly someone always just walks up and plays to turn around going no one ever talks to us what is going on 
and they're looking and then you see a few little nudges as people you just hear the very quietly whispered they're not from around here who's that look at their clothes are they from up north I wonder what this is about shut up shut up shut up let's have a listen okay now this is the part of the entertainment where I ask you what kind of song you want to hear so put your hands together if you want to hear a love song one person puts his hands together literally just <laughs> puts his hands together and the table would go Way! what are you doing what are you doing oh, a love song Way! it's a stag do it's a stag do <laughs> okay now put your hands together if you want to hear a song about a heist yeah, give us the heist song well the joke is on you because it's a love song about a heist yeah oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, good brilliant. one, it's a good one. Well done. There's a sort of a confused, huh? Oh, huh? From the audience. Oh, I get it. And then this yeah. happens. Oh, there once was a man with a really big sword who put up a poster and offered reward for something his family owned and then lost. But he wanted it back and no matter the cost. His father's 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 mum once owned a ruby as bright as the sun and he believed his destiny was finding the ruby wherever it be. And oh there once was a woman with fingers so light she stole every day and she stole through the night along with her income that's lifted from fools. She liked helping men finding their family jewelry. <laughs> She saw the poster that he made, he eagerly took up her offer of aid, and so they quested out one day to a castle where they heard the ruby now lay. Where they fought dragons and kobolds and mimics and gnolls and bugbears and owlbears and goblins and trolls and zombies and once a gelatinous cube. Then they came to a chamber where they found the ruby. <laughs> And so at last their quest was through, and he said, I want to spend my life questing with you. They emerged together into the sun. Then she stole the ruby and off she did run. Hey! hey. Woohoo! Uh, fires scorching rays into the air. Yeah! <laughs> 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 So you set fire to all the trestle above you. <laughs> I didn't realise there was trestle. And so the trestle above you just simmers a little bit. And you see a few people going, Oi, 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 watch it! As the rest of the audience are like, Whoa, that was amazing, that was amazing! And you see the guy that had called for the love song earlier going, Oh, beautiful, to the end. <laughs> uh, you see the little boy runs over and goes, That was really good. Boz said uh, you can have a meal on the house for you and your party for that if you'd like. Oh, thank you very much. That would be so kind. Right. And uh, before leaving the stage, uh, Seed sort of turns back to the audience and says, uh, thank you very much for listening to my human entertainment. And don't forget to tip your bard. And I don't mean push me over. And then leaves the stage. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have inspiration, take it. <laughs> this is like the third time. We need to just start using it. Yeah, I might have to institute a rule that inspiration burns at the end of the night. Uh, <laughs> just so we start getting through using it, yeah, yeah, sure. not hoarding it. Um, so within sort of five minutes from this, platters are brought over to you that are served on vine leaves. And on them is uh, charcoal roasted uh, lamb, for the most part, that's got garlic and rosemary, a little bit of oil, of olive oil on it. Um, and you also get some lovely crusty... Uh, kind of multi-grain bread that's just white and fluffy and when you pull it apart you hear a crunch um, I'm really hungry if you can't tell Ooh, uh, there's I'm this so like hungry. wonderful fresh lettuce again with like, Chinella's version of balsamic vinegar and some blocks of cheese and this all just comes out onto the uh, what's table this, what's this green um, girly thing on the side it looks really nice um, yes this, this is lettuce Someone not the other, gutting. the darker green thing. Looks like he's been cooked with garlic and... Someone not the other, gutting. the darker green thing. Looks like he's been cooked with garlic and onion. Oh, spinach. 
Okay, brilliant, lovely. <laughs> Uh, first things first, guys. Let's. Hell does um, not let's, exist in Erin. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's pack up a little bit of this. Take it back for Phaser, right? Because she probably hasn't eaten. Um, it's only fair. Oh, well, I, get, I just wanted uh, to get, get a napkin out this. and like this make a little amazing. make a little bindle. You could just food. wrap it in one of the vine leaves, couldn't you, Ripper? I mean, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. What would you like to do as you sit there drinking, eating a free meal? and uh, enjoying people can even like keep patting seed on the shoulder and saying well done well done and uh you actually you make seven silver over the course of the evening as people just keep dropping money off to you in mostly in coppers so seven silver is fair amount okay seed um every time seed receives money uh they try and tuck it into the leather pouch on their belt without letting anybody else see what is inside the leather pouch What's Octavius doing while this is, uh, while this <laughs> is happening? Music, is passive. He's, he's not had a touch. He's had a sip of wine, and that's it, because he knows it's his wine now. Um, <laughs> yeah, and he's just he's ready to head back when the rest of the group does. Mm. I've had, uh, I think I've had Cutler. He's definitely had Cutler, Cutler wines, and he, uh, if not, he's definitely drank um, Octavius's that he noticed he pushed into the middle of the thingy. So, mm. cut couple of wines, Dan. Uh, I'm ready for a good sleep as well. And this has been a very successful evening. Thank you, Seed. Mm. Wonderful, wonderful song. No problem. I learned so, that one from a bard. Good, good. Was Just... this, uh, did you learn it from your bard, the uh, gentleman uh, that you travelled with on the road, or the person that you travelled with on the road? I did. His name was Hawthorne Steele, and his poster said he was the greatest bard in the world. Oh, uh, it wasn't... What sort of poster was it? It wasn't a wanted poster, was it? <laughs> because what is his... a wanted poster? Uh, uh, Did it say it a bounty on the poster of numbers? There were some numbers. I'm not sure what the numbers were. It might have been a performance date. I'm not sure. Maybe it was the amount of people that liked him, you know? I think Sometimes. it was quite a big number. I bet it was. I bet it was, yeah. And, like, Lap gives six, 60 eyes across the table. Those those Asian eyes which we've all got <laughs> through the gritted teeth. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, so as you guys are having this conversation, a... Um, interesting character kind of sidles up to the table and all right Mark. Ah. if if a halfling could look like holly from red dwarf uh, but original holly so sort of middle aged original holly yeah uh balding bit of hair round uh but with spectacles that I don't like to denigrate people because we're all nerds and geeks here, but I oh, just the geekiest shit you've ever seen. Um, these aren't geek as in they're going to have a cool discussion with you about the symbology in Battlestar Galactica. These are the kind of geek that are going to give you a 17-hour discussion, discussion about by the why the new uh, Microsoft Excel hyperlinks are actually much better than the old ones. And well, I sort of would that, actually so, jump. Yeah. I would jump on that conversation to be fair. <laughs> Uh, they talk about the limit of number of rows. Yeah. And uh, he walks over Topical. and uh, he turns to Seed and goes, Hello, that was really good. I really liked that. I noticed, uh, noticed you playing that drum. Oh, this drum? And I'll just hold it out. Yeah, 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 that's the one. Look, if you, uh, if you like that sort of thing, you might want to... Uh, Swing by my shop tomorrow. I've got something you might like. Oh, yes, please. Where is your shop? So it gives you a description, uh, which is inside Coin Row still. So it goes right down there, a few streets on the right, and around there. It's sort of fairly easy to find. It goes, right, look for me. Uh, you just find it's called Silverthorn's Oddities. Oh, okay. Are you Silverthorn? Yes, yes, that, that's me. My name is Mirin, Mirin Silverthorn. It is lovely to meet you. My name is Seed and I am a bard. Human bard. Hello. Cu human. Bard. Human. Right. Oh, right. Fair enough. 
Uh, hello, Steed. I'm a halfling, and I, uh, well, I own a shop, a very special shop, as you'll see if you come and see it tomorrow. Lovely. Well, I will leave you all to your evening. Farewell. Toddles off, uh, swaying and singing the last few refrains of your song. Steed, I, I think you just got a date. What is a date? Oh, we have... I'm probably not the best person to explain it to you, but I've... Yeah, well, don't worry, really like, I see all this got time, it. you know? No, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you about it later. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry. Okay. Human explain it to you later. Don't worry. Oh, very good. Oh, then. nice. Oh, um, I'm feeling a bit tired, though, and I want to go check on Phaser. That, that food might get too cold, so um, I'm going to head back. Yeah, I'll come with you. Clunk. Yeah. Oh, Davis like to... is already gone, so um Six would like to go up to the two hottest the hottest man and the hottest woman at the bar and just try and chat them up. Now he's gonna do it, whether he succeeds or not, uh, that's that's up to you and all fate. But woman? he's but that's oh. just just he just likes to sort of chat to the most important, most interesting or the hottest Make me, people, you know, the uh, significant people. Uh, a, well, as one would expect. Um, beauty being entirely subjective and in the <laughs> eye of the beholder. He would oh, also um, look, well, he would look for a powerful, um, he would look for a powerful figure, but he doesn't think that there is one in this place. So he'd look to the people who are maybe holding the, the biggest okay. amount of court. I mean, there were. is a relatively attractive uh, centaur couple who are standing. Uh, they've kind of got these long chelanges that they are lounging on. And uh, they are sat there, sort of top half reclining with these amazing uh, goblets. They are in the taverna opposite, on the other side of the road. They're not going to be in the same one. And they're on the opposite side of the road looks a little bit more upmarket and definitely out of your price range. And uh, as you walk over, you can just hear one going, Oh, Sebastian, that's hilarious. Well, I hadn't seen them since, what was it, the winter of 42. And I couldn't believe it. No, they had smoked salmon. It was marvellous. Get it from up north. And you just Yeah, he, t he turns around and, and, and walks back. He doesn't want to embarrass himself. This isn't his sort of people. He, he likes influence. He likes interesting people, but only if they have some sort of value to give. Um, so he would, he would log them and perhaps maybe want to know more about them another time. And he would find he would enjoy the idea of a couple and enjoy the idea of their 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 half horse bodies. He would enjoy their you know that. that or are they image. half human bodies? Oh, that's a good question. I don't want to be humanist. Um, yeah, but he would. But he would turn around and think, okay, maybe now's not the time to to try and get some influence in in some regard. Okay, so I'm assuming are we are we heading back to the hostel? So as you come in, you mm -hmm. come up the two flights of stairs, and what you find, uh, you kind of struggle to get the door open a little bit, and you have to push it, and as you do, quite a lot of raw materials, bits of metal and bits of wood, um, and you're not quite sure where any of it was, because it wasn't up here earlier, just scatters and fall across the floor. And Phaser, what are you doing? Uh, Phaser is uh, in, in a quite, a, it's not just a lot of, uh, um, materials around, there's also a bit of smoke um, and you know in a manga cartoon moment where you've got quite a serious cartoon character and then all of a sudden it goes really manga childish cartoon with big hearts in their eyes <laughs> it's like that moment and she just sort of says to you isn't she beautiful and there's this um, it's a I don't know. It's not a very commonly known creature that it's. It looks like, but it is. Uh, it's a steel defender, and it she is shaped like a giant pangolin, um, which is a real thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, but it looks like a cross between an anteater and a metal pine cone. Basically, it's about five foot long, um, and just under three foot high, and it has uh, a long snout. With a with a small mouth, um, and it's it, a rounded back that continues onto a really long, fat but flat tail, um, which and the tail makes up about half the length of its body, um, and the tail is slightly hovering above the ground because it acts as a counterweight. The the creature walks mainly on its hind legs with its front claws and head sort of close to the ground as well, so like a little, almost like a little thing, and it 
front claws are long and powerful um and uh so it can dig and it can climb a bit as well um and when it needs the, the claws are so long that if it does need to walk on all fours it, it curls them under and walks on its knuckles but it's covered in large scales and they're very large um, and they from, run from the tip of its nose all along its back to the end of its tail um, but they're alternately steel burnished wood and hardened clay and they're patterned with fine waves and they look really sharp and it gives a little flex and it lets out a little hoot <laughs> and its scales sort of shuffle and ripple down its bodies um, and its eyes are a soft gold and it slowly blinks its thick heavy eyelids and its long eyelashes like goo and then it rolls into a ball oh <laughs> and it rolls my it god and it, look at you and it <laughs> and it and does a flame is this circle. oh my god it does a little tight circle around phaser unrolls and then sends out a really long thin tongue um just to quickly lick phaser's cheek meet toots Oh my god, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen! And like, Ripper gets un under the chin. Where did it come from? Do you want me to kill it? Careful, did it come careful, in through the window? Careful. Don't what cut your it? fingers. And if you touch Toots, Toots will touch you back. And that's not a good thing. She's very smart. Well, I think we're going to have to teach this. We have to teach Toots about consent, aren't we? Oh, we... <laughs> <laughs> Toots lets out a little hoot. <laughs> she quite likes the stroke of under her chin. Faisal, <laughs> where did it come from? In 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 my my brain, but there there are there are creatures that look like her around our um around where I my home. I was feeling a bit homesick, um and you know I I've I've, I've been learning skills as we've been going on and traveling and and meeting new people and and I, and I've been wanting to to build something like her, but now I just it just it just clicked what I could do. You, I think that's cool. You made this? Oh yes, yeah yes. I'm very tired. You couldn't now. make I a spear that when you throw it, it comes back. Yeah, no, I'm only That's joking. Right. I'm only joking. You know, it's it's lovely this uh, Pokemon <laughs> thing. I don't know what a Pokemon is, but if I did, it would bloody look like this probably. Six. I've noticed you seem to be fixated a little bit on this spear. Are you okay? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. I just. I uh, just the uh, the wine. You know. I, I just. Uh, it's just getting to me. Of course. Batavius, he's my big brother. That's all I need to say. Yeah, uh, are you, are you, were you talking about any No, 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 nothing, 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 brother. Anything I didn't. I think, um, I think or... there was something on his ears blowing it away. No, oh, okay, no, 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 no I fully understand. I have now back to this, uh, this <laughs> monstrosity. <laughs> creature, creature. Sorry, I don't, I don't know. Gosh, I, did, I didn't mean. I that. don't know how Faze is going to react to you calling a, a beautiful, beautiful creation of monstrosity. <laughs> I just don't think he's come across something like this for a while. You know, he knows physical I don't think creatures. Anyone's seen like it. animals, like in being used in the in the war, right? And t he's used to all these all shapes and sizes, but something that's come from a person's mind that's been crazy. Yeah, like this, something that's mechanical. He would never. Yeah. In fact, no one would have seen anything. Quite like beastly this to him because he just just because he hasn't. He's not had a good experience with one, let's say. You know, when you see you've only met horrible cats and somebody goes, hey, I've got a lovely cat. And you're like, prove it to me first. Right, I want to see this <laughs> lovely cat before I Wait. believe that there is such a thing. Wait, this thing isn't, this thing isn't, it isn't, it isn't real. It's as, it's as real as you or I. We were all made by some, by, by Andre and, uh, and, and Andre. And... I mean, well, I mean like, I mean like, I mean like, and I like poke it in the chest. I'm like, in here, there's... I mean... There's cogs, right? Or is there you art? Can't, you can't, you can't... Uh, what um... really is inside all of us, Ripper? Except, like, I organic mean... cogs? Well, I mean, I had a spear, a, I had a spear go a, through my shoulder, so you know it's exactly what's inside of me. Ripper, Ripper, yeah. do you say my bird is alive? Um, well, I and mean, that, that well, has first neither. of all, you... That has nothing inside it. It is a spirit. Well, what's that mean? Yeah, but that's, that's like... But well, you know that's spirit, isn't it? What's in this one? You know, maybe we can spirit. find the library. Well, look, it's oh, look, and look, we can have a look at look, some look, books. Look, 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 right? Look, all I was gonna say was I came in here thinking Phaser adopted new pet, right? Not realizing that actually she's created this thing, and I am. Mar Before you all jumped on me, yeah, I was gonna marvel about how amazing this creation looks, right? I've got fuck you, lot, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I think Phaser um, goes up to Ripper and she sort of taps him slowly on the shoulder uh, and goes, 
did you really think that what something I created was a was a was a real thing? Uh, and if we remember from episode one, um, <laughs> Ripper <Sorry> speaks <laughs> Nomish. Yeah, mm. yeah. And so in in Nomish, I will only reply to her, and I will say, yeah, I I would say, um, yeah, I've I genuinely thought this was something that you did that you didn't create. I thought it was something that you found, and the fact that I now know that it is your creation. It is even more beautiful that you can make something look that real. Thank you. Um, and I'm thinking in Norwich as well. And what I would say to him is um, uh, where I come from, people believe that ideas are alive. Um, and this, she was born from an idea. And then um, we'll leave it at that. But you have a good sleep. And Thank I you. hope she doesn't take up your room. I promise she doesn't snore. I can't make that same promise for me. I know. <laughs> Step away. <laughs> okay, are we all falling asleep? Anything anyone else would like to do? Um, before we fall asleep, uh, Sid would like to whisper up to up to Faser and say, Faser, Faser, can I ask you something? Yes, see. What's up? Um... I didn't want to ask you this earlier because I didn't want to alarm anybody, but do you remember you were telling us about the sick person that you saw in the hospital? Yes, yes. And you said that it sounded like they were trying to say a name or a word, and it ended in Ian? Yes, that's right. You don't think that they were trying to say Lurian, do you? I don't know. It could be. Um, but it, it could be anything. It, it could be um, uh, Brian. I, I don't know. It was uh, okay. only a part word that they, that they said that I heard. Um, okay, that's good. I hope it was Brian. Okay. <laughs> Six or so for a while he'll watch. I don't know if there's a window in the place. Is there a window in this room? What sort of room is it, um, John? Uh, there is, but it's sort of slightly too, well you're on the third floor slightly too low so you've got to stoop down and it's about that big so for a while he'll either take a bed by the window or he'll sit by the window and he'll just sort of look out keep watch and he's got one eye on the strange creature that has appeared in the room uh just 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 every so often just gives it a look just to just make me a perception doing. check please six Oh, that's seven. That's not good. You see a drunk uh, pissing against the wall. Yep, it's fair enough. It seems like uh, the going thing for this town. Yeah, so that's that six. He's just going to stay okay. by the Anyone window. Anyone else doing anything before bed? Um, face is, uh, oh, gosh, I'm, I've been working all evening. I'm very hungry. Oh, crikey. Um, it's, a, it's nearly midnight now, I would say, by the time you guys have all gone out for food and drink and come back and for phaser even though she's an amazing builder to craft this it's definitely uh, been four or five hours i mean i feel like either lack or myself would have given yeah or reach under ripper's snoring um body really gently um i think i think we did it and like pulls out like a half crushed vine leaf so, um, <laughs> i think this will probably taste nicer with his cologne um but it was really nice when we had to do the tavern. Um, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I actually, have one barely more warm. Question. I do have one more question before sleep. Is do these bunk beds <laughs> have ladders? Oh no. Oh, I step on to Ripper to get onto my top bunk. <laughs> Can you just make me a dexterity check, please, Octavius? <laughs> Can I can I give him the help action because I've got rock hard abs and it's basically like stepping on a stone anyway. Yeah, I want to see if version. you even notice if he's really yeah. dexterous. Maybe he just springs up. That's just the early Disney sort of eight. classic noise that would be made if someone stands An on eight. someone else's chest. Yeah. You absolutely just stand on his liver at that point. And even though it's pretty rocky, that's just round the side where you yeah, know no one gets muscle. Bit where there's there. not much muscle, but. <laughs> You, you make it to the top bunk, but yes, Ripper, you are mildly squished. I would say take one HP of damage, but you're about to have a Sorry. long rest, so <laughs> it's probably not an issue. 
Um, and unless anyone else has any other business before bed. Um, then... There is only one last thing that Seed will do when they think everyone else is asleep. Then, as far as you know, everyone else is now asleep. Okay. Seed is going to try and get up very quietly and go over to Toots. And... Roll me a stealth check first, please. Yep. At this point, Six has probably fallen asleep in his chair, you know, with like his port or whatever, with his wine, the last of his nightcap with him. Toots, um, Toots, Toots is ever vigilant, so he, she can't yeah, be surprised. Heads up. It's a 22. No one else, you don't even stare anyone. Even Octavius doesn't hear you. <laughs> That's how stealthy you are. So Seed is very gently because they're still slightly trying to work out what Toots is, they're going to try and cast Speak With Animals on Toots. Okay. So you cast Speak With Animals. Uh, you reach out your hands and Seed's magic kind of forms and this odd sort of snowy glow swirls around and then settles on Toots. Okay, and then Seed is going to speak to Toots and say... Hello, Toots. My name is Seed. Happy first day of creation. <laughs> there is no reply. Okay. Toots, um, Toots Seed... understands you, but ah. Toots understands you, but she understands all the languages I understand. So she'll probably just give a happy little toot. <laughs> happy little toot. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Excellent. In which case, Seed will then say to Toots. You will get used to the humanoids after a while. Trust me. And then Seed will give Toots a gentle little kind of pat of acknowledgement and then go back to bed. Dude. <laughs> okay. So uh, with that, you all settle into your night's sleep and uh, you sleep very restfully, gaining all the benefits of a long rest. And... If, I think we did at the end of last session, but just for everyone at home, finally reaching level three uh, officially. So I'm going to call break there because we've got a busy day in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed the first half, ladies and gents. You've got five minutes now to nip to the loo, grab a drink, do what you need to do, and we'll be back soon. <laughs>
Hello and Hello. welcome back. Uh, so before the break, our intrepid party left the hospital, found a hospital, uh, ate some food. We're introduced to Toots, uh, Phaser's new companion, and then went to bed. It is now the morning. Uh, you wake up first, Ripper. It's with a nervous, giddy excitement. It's about an hour before dawn. You can just see the false light on the horizon out of this tiny window. Or at least you can once you've sort of moved Six's arm as he's fallen asleep completely against the wall by now. Uh, as also discussed in one of the early episodes, Ripper has a horn. And he's going to blow it to wake everybody up. <laughs> oh god oh my goodness no oh, guys 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 it's time it's always it's not just time yet but i thought i'd give you the amount of time but it's almost time it's almost time yeah yeah, yeah. the broom on the ceiling <laughs> or on the floorboards for you from your case underneath as... oh is it check out already right yeah so um right guys i gotta do my oath uh uh, uh, uh i'm i'm nervous I've never done this before. I don't know what to do. Oh God, what if I get it wrong? What if I, what if, what if That's okay, that's wrong? okay, that's okay. I tell you what, why don't I make you a special cup of tea? And then- oh God, I'd, love, I'd love that, I'd love that. I don't want to be like, okay. <laughs> I don't want to be then, parched. Okay, I'll <gasps> make you, it will be a special cup of tea as well. So she sets, sits down and there's a bit more of a ritual to it. A bit like when she made the tea at the, at the foot of Andre's statue. Um, as there's a routine and a, and a ritual to making this tea. I'm just making that. Voila. Interestingly, as the water just starts to boil uh, in the background, it reaches a certain cadence and toots, lumbers over, toot, in time with the kettle and it forms this weird, <laughs> dissonant, but lovely harmony. Fair enough. Um, uh, okay, so the, the tea is brewed. Now, uh, oh. Ripper, to drink this tea, you must sit and okay. you must only think of the tea. Sniff it, feel the smell the aroma. No, gently, gently. Right. Take a nice, deep, calming breath and breathe out. Uh... <laughs> and now you can drink the tea. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just got a little something in my throat there. Thank you very much, when he that tries was... to take a second sip, yeah. like Sticksmith is playing with his horn and just presses it. Honk at the uh. second. Honk at the second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you okay. feel better? I do. Thank you very much, Fraser. You're very I'm welcome. just worried, you know, like this is uh, this is the beginning of my my new life, my journey, my new goal. And, you know, it's 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 not really something that comes around each day. And, you know, um uh you know, like normally I perform under pressure, right? There's no problems, but you know, it's just, it's, I just take solace a... in the fact that Andra is not going to care if you slip up on a couple of words. I mean, absolutely. It's Aluria that I'm worried about, not Andra. <laughs> but thanks, thanks for the support, though. Uh, young, right. young man, may I, uh, Alluria, son, may yes. I? Ask? Uh, when was the last time you did something you were very, very proud of that went well? May I ask? Well, I mean. Meeting you guys was the most recent one, I think. Um, you know, there's. I told a story to these guys the other day about about the dog. Um, I just think yeah, Lack told me about the dog. You know, um, and we were talking him and I, and uh, Mother had a saying. Uh, you know, she said uh, sometimes lightning does strike twice. So you know, you never could, um, you never could understand that because you know. But she she believed it. You believe it, and sometimes it strikes twice. You do well, you do well again. That's hmm. okay. You know, you you channel that. I uh, I mean, you know, okay. I I would have loved to have. I come from a really big family, and we all celebrate each other, and we all love each other. You know, we're there to pick each other up when something goes wrong, and we're there to celebrate everyone when it goes right. And none of them are here, and I do feel a little lost. So I really think that's why I really appreciate all of you guys sort of and he starts to get a little bit more flustered Ripper, about his family we're here to celebrate when everything goes right today okay Ripper, be fine. Ripper, okay the reason that the goddess of life lives with the god of death is because the beginning of everything is an end of something else so that's why you may feel a bit anxious but don't worry all good beginnings start with an end that is that is that is really that is really profound phase thank you very much you're very welcome 
Seed what? is just going to very quietly start humming the song they gave you in the temple and gives you a little oh. smile. All right. All right, I think I'm ready, guys. We all ready? We all ready? We all ready? You ready? Lack, like, you don't look ready. Ripper, <laughs> just remember, breathe five in, hold for four, breathe six out. E. Five, four, six. You'll be fine. All right. All right. Shall we? Shall we, guys? Whenever with, you're ready. With that, you all head down the stairs, Ripper twirling your cloak on and it glimmers uh, in the kind of the lamplight of the room you head down the stairs and outside and even though it is kind of mid-autumn there is a tinge of warmth in the air today uh, it's too early to see how the day will turn out I say this the sun isn't yet over the horizon there's just enough light to see you make your way through the narrow streets of coin row you get down to the forum and you find again uh, the Temple of Alluria. However, as you get to the Forum, you see something that you hadn't expected. There is actually a small crowd. Now, this crowd, you kind of have to push your way through a little bit, and then as you get nearer, you see that the uh, the crowd is sort of aligned facing northwest, where um, Alluria's temple is. In fact, outside you see two rows of legionnaires um, Octavius recognises them instantly as the fourth legion they have the same marks that you'd seen before and they are all standing with their shields on one side and their pilums stretched over forming an arch and it leads all the way to the temple on the temple steps about 200 yards in front of you there is a figure that you recognise from yesterday you see uh, Tetia, who was the under priestess there, who is wearing something that's a little jarring. Uh, it's dim, but you can you could all easily see this. She's wearing what, on a younger, uh, more matronly woman, could be construed as divine clothing. Um, there's that saying from cool hipsters when they have parties: you know, come as you're in a god and goddess, and. Uh, these clothes certainly seem to channel that kind of white uh, with gold inlays and these wonderful headdress that's filled with flowers and vines and um, you almost see kind of bees uh, aimlessly flapping around and dropping down and off again and she's decked in golden bangles and it would look amazing were it not on Tetia with your looks kind of grumpy and it, it's slightly jarring but for the moment she is holding her own you were sort of expecting to go into the temple and as you come up to the entrance where the uh, soldiers are about 200 yards worth of these crossed pillars, they drop down and block your way uh, and what uh, uh, hold on a minute <laughs> and uh, you can everyone just make a perception check Ugh. 11 17 8 I'm too excited 8 19 30 20 So anyone over a 13 would hear on the steps the other end Teddy going well, I know I put it somewhere um, they oh oh they're here they're here <clears throat> and uh she looks down and she calls out and says those who would come before the goddess of life must be sure of purpose. They must be pure of heart. And, um, uh, and she kind of ducks her head down, pulls out a scroll and starts reading. Okay, yes, yes, sure of life, sure of purpose. That's it. Yes, that's it. And clean in intention. I'm not really sure what that means. Would you undertake the challenge? I do. I accept the challenge. And then these uh, legionnaires pull back the first pillars, and you manage to walk past about ten of them before, like a gate, two more by your way. And 
the crowd is sort of turning and everyone else is looking around at the crowd and this doesn't seem like a, you know a quiet or that everyone's looking sort of well, this is interesting what, what is going on it's like street theater crowds more than um end of star wars crowd and uh they are all watching as then uh Tetia looks up and says in that case who comes searching for the goddess of life what is your name I am Ripper from Banyet, first of his name. And uh, the gates open, you walk another little distance. Again, another set close. And oh. why have you come? I have come to swear an oath to pledge fealty to the goddess Alluria. The next gates drive open, you uh, walk another step. You're about halfway down towards the temple now as two more bar your way. And she turns again and uh, says You have come to swear an oath. What would you offer her? I offer her my life. They on bar. You make your way down and then in the arch you're expecting two more at some point and they don't a figure steps out and he's all in black long dark hood so much so that you cannot see the visage inside and he holds up his hand and he says halt if you would enter the enter the temple of my wife why would you declare yourself worthy I'm a believer of Alluria. I am one who walks this earth and has seen many tragedy. I want to share the goddess's true beliefs and blessings of the people of this earth. And he's still holding his hand out and he says, and he kind of turns it round and twists it so it's in front of him like that. And he says, would you be willing to take my hand? to walk to her side for those that wish to serve the goddess of life walk alongside death every day I will take your hand under one condition lifts an eyebrow the promise of life and the release of death are two things that are intertwined in this world however I will never take the hand of someone that will abuse life but I will of someone who allows life to take its natural course. Then take my hand, child. I take this person's hand. He kind of grips you, um, you get that kind of thing going on, and then he turns and you just walk side by side. And as you come to the uh, steps leading up to the temple, just under the arch, he instinctively goes to one knee. I also drop to one knee. And he looks up at Tetia and says, My lady, I have brought one who has come seeking service to you. Would you accept him, knowing that he shall ever be at my side? And uh, Tetia looks a little bit, she, you can kind of tell she looks a bit uncomfortable, even though this is clearly a uh, kind of a formal structure. Still Aramis. And uh, she goes, right, yes, um... I would accept him. Come forth, Ripper, first of your name. Ripper stands up proudly, um, turns to the, the man all in black, nods, releases his hand and steps forward. You step up the stairs and Tetia, tiny as she is compared to you, like that, <laughs> sort of grabs you by your forearms <laughs> and says, come down here, come down here and sort of lean down to her. She goes, Are you sure you want to do this, boy? I want you to do it. There's no turning back. I have never been more sure about anything in my life. Right, well, here we go then. And uh, she sits up and, or stands up, sorry, and then turns to the crowd and says, You have come before crowd, before swords, before my husband himself, and declared your intention to vow to serve me speak now your vow before these witnesses may its words bind you to Aluria's heart 
and may your arm become hers. Speak. Alluria, goddess of life and keeper of the stars, mother to us all. I feel deep within me that I'm destined for greatness, but I don't know how to access it. I need your light. I need your guidance. I want to make you proud, like all mothers should feel for their children. Allow me to be the man amongst the people. I will share the mystery of love, warmth and brightness, and brighten the souls of wanderers with enlightened tales. I want to celebrate life of those who adore you and punish those who abuse it. I will carry your light within me everywhere I go. I swear this oath in front of you and in front of Aramis and all other gods of this realm. So there's this kind of hush over the crowd as they're watching. Like, oh my God. Wow. This actually happens. And uh, Tetia turns to you and says, all that is left, enter my temple and drink from my cup. And then you are bound to Aluria now and always. And she steps to the side, giving you entryway to the temple. Ripper will stand, give a, give a flick of the cape, I think, and walk into the temple. So in the temple, you see the same frescoes, the same paintings you saw before. Uh, on the altar that uh, yesterday Tetya had appeared from behind, you see a single golden chalice. I pick up the chalice and as was taught this morning savor uh, the smell I, I breathe in gently um use the breathing technique that was taught to me by lack as well breathe out close my eyes and take a sip okay i would like everyone else to take their headphones off please so as you sip what you notice is it's mead it's honey wine and it's rich and filled with the joy of life and as you close your eyes feeling the solemnness of your vow you see something you get the sense of infinite void this sense of infinity stretching out before you it's comforting womb-like within that void the darkness leads your mind to thoughts of reverence the love for life uh, everything is sort of swirling and there's this sense of a presence near you it sort of smells like all mothers smell it's just got that sense of home this feeling of acceptance and you feel in your heart something click and then in that moment that void turns and twists. You're not sure what it is, but something's not quite right. And you can feel Aluria, but something feels discordant. You can feel her, but you get a sense that you need to find the answer to this. And if everyone else, everyone else can put their headphones back on, please. And uh, with this being done, you finish your drink, you put it down, and you exit the temple, where now you see the crowds clapping and cheering, and what would you like to do? Um, I think Ripper will take this moment uh, to stand in front of the crowds and sort of raise his hands as if to sort of maybe bring a hush over them so he could say something. This is the first time in a long time that he's had so many eyes um, on him from so many different people. And they are clapping, cheering, less in a sense of worship of you, more in a sense of like, wow, this is great. You know, like when you're at a restaurant and you see it's someone else's birthday or someone else's wedding mm. and you're just caught, caught up in the shared joy of the situation. Um, the legions who'd been lining the temple before you turn lift one pillar in salute bring it down turn again and just march off 
the uh, Tetia kind of hobbles up to you and goes, Oh, well, well done. I'm glad that's settled. Well, you can't take that back now. That's with you forever. How did it go? Was it, what did the mead taste like? I've always wanted to drink it, you know. The meads tasted like... Tasted like the warmth of a house in a cold, rainy winter's night. Oh, yeah, quite interesting. Right, well, I've got to actually get back to work, because it's the start of my day, you see. If you need anything, I'll be in the temple. I want to thank you for putting this together. I know it is, it's been a long time since someone's been able to take an oath. It's been a even longer time since a man has been able to step through the threshold of this temple and speak the words to the goddess. Everything that you have done has been amazing. I will never forget it. And you will always be the first person I come to in times of trouble when it comes to the faith of Illyria. Well, uh, that's very kind, but it'd be a bloody inconvenience if you do. I'm normally quite busy. Um, uh, she's, says, she's saying it, but she clearly looks a bit appreciative. You sense that she's a spiky, but, you know, it just doesn't really mean she's... Well, there's a bloody priestess would ever come back. I wouldn't have to do all these things. Ridiculous! Where has the priestess gone? No idea! Where... what was she doing before? I thought I just said I had no idea. No, 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 no. You are clearly the subordinate to this woman yes you are you would have known what she does where she goes can i have a word with you and i sort of pull her a bit further away from the crowds okay look something although the ceremony was was perfect there was just something that wasn't right about it i w- would like to commune with your high priestess about it if she's in trouble you can tell me and I have sworn an oath to Illyria to protect, to serve. That means you and your order are the people that I must save. And allow me to be the right hand to strike. Well, I'd bloody love you to do that, actually, young man, but I've just got no idea. I'm not really sure what happened. She left saying, oh, I'll be back in a day or two. And that was two months ago. Two months ago? Has yes. she got a, cause she got a quarters here? Can we investigate well, it? In the temple next to me, but she's not been there. Oh, there might be something. Listen, I travel with a band of people who some specialise in uh, viewing rooms where there are answers to questions you might not know the answer to. Oh, sorry. There are answers to questions you might not even know to ask. Allow us to have a search and maybe we can understand what's happened to your high priestess. Uh, she looks very reluctant. Make a persuasion roll. It's going to be a dirty 20. Well, it's not really done, but I suppose, well, well, you've sworn your oath and I can't really turn that down now, can I? Right, right come along, come along. She turns around and starts waddling. I, the I sort of signalled to the party. I tell them all to I'm doing like this. What's going on? It's, uh, uh, well, he's, he's, he's pushed to. Excuse are we, me, sorry. Are we going to, jump... are we going sorry, to the just... Minotaur's house now? I think. I think. Uh, this Ripper, I think Ripper wants us. Very urgent. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, he, he's just saying. He, he's saying uh, everything's okay here. Don't worry. Stay where you are. I, I don't know. That looks signal. more like the trouble yeah. signal. I think La- we should go over there. Black's gonna wind his way through. Yeah. Yeah, Faze um, is going to, to yeah, go with, with, with Toots at her heels. The crowd is dispersing quite rapidly now as it's uh, just as Ripper had come out, the sun peaks the horizon and he stands over the first rays of light streaming past him uh, as you make your way towards him. What's um, going on, Ripper? I thought we were going to the Minotaur's house. Guys, I want to... Uh... So, don't panic, right? The ritual's fine. Everything's good. I feel good. I feel uh, Elyria's power. You've communed with the goddess and you've just told us to not panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. 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 The more you say fine, the less. It's fine. Honestly, it's fine. It's fine. Right? It's fine. Get worried. It's fine. need to. Yeah, it's becoming a problem now. So, you have some of that tea? So, the high. 
priestess went missing and something's up uh we have been granted gracially access to her quarters to see if there's anything there i feel like we know we all shared that dream right and something has awoken something's been unsettled since then and i'm not just talking about the curry right it it's been this might be way bigger than all of us if it's interrupted a ceremony to the gods I mean, oh okay so so now we're involved in two potential plots that are way bigger than all of us yeah 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 but you know you only the way only way you get into bigger boots is and you grow into them right sure and it's probably bigger than one of us but all together huh? yeah we all you fit know? in the boots so there's a story about that my, wasn't there? well so my question is is Potentially, we have two people's lives in the hospital that are in immediate danger. So it's I'm trying to prioritize us all. Let's look. Let's take. Let's take like our fair. Have a quick look around the room, see what we can find, and then we can go minotaurs ass. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. So this is important, I, just, you Ripper. I I get the, that this is important. Yeah, but what happened? So it worked. You are communing with the gods. You have your a blessing. I I you know I we was watching. Uh, the Six Smith, you seem like a tangent man. You have a uh, uh, completed a puzzle. Yeah, every uh, battlefield I have taken my troops onto has been a puzzle. All right, you know the feeling when you slip that last piece in and you see the complete picture. Yeah, the knife in the back of the other commander. Yeah, Absolutely. I do that at home because Six Smith always took the last piece and hid it to the very end, so I could never put the last piece in. You right. know what? There's a funny story about a battle I was commanding where I did exactly the same I, thing. You know? I think this is Ripper's moment, though. Um, sorry, Ripper. <laughs> the point I'm getting to is that satisfaction of putting that last piece in the puzzle and you take a step back and look at the completed picture, that's what it feels like. Ah, oh, well, congratulations then. Thank that's you very wonderful. much. I'm I'm in the presence and of... now and now I need that I need that not necessarily keen mind because you might not be taking that but I need that uh, battlefield intelligence of yours the way that you can see things that other people can't the way that you can answer questions that people do need not know how to ask I need that from you right now I need that you for know, you in this I, room I was already going student, to come though. and help I was just wanting to make sure that the most important thing that we were here for today has been completed I'm very proud of you, my friend. Very proud. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go walk up to the chambers, the high priestess's chambers. Yeah. Okay, so you walk through the temple and Tetia goes, right, come on, this way. And she opens uh, the side door and you've gone from this quite lavish temple into somewhere very sparse. Considering it serving the goddess of life and everything else had been gilded and uh, painted, this is a plain wooden chamber that just has two plain cots in it um, with, I mean, calling these a mattress would be a long stretch of the truth. They are almost just blankets on hard wooden pallets. Uh, they're clearly two separate sides of the room, not in any sort of way that you'd pick up tension, just clearly the two people, one half of the room each. Is there any foot lockers or? Uh, yeah, there are, are kind of small cupboards around the place not necessarily a foot locker they both have a rail set in that sort of just comes out and is freestanding upon which is hung a couple of robes uh who would like to do what uh have all of her personal effects been left as they are or have you removed stuff from the room in the last two months i'm not touching any of her stuff has anybody else touched any of her stuff well not since i've been here hmm. okay thank you um, may I ask which which side of the room belongs to the high priestess and which is yours? One of the sides of the room, now you turn back, is immaculately kept. Um, pristine, folding, blankets, uh, a neat book on the side table, clean, laundered robes. The other side looks like a teenager's bedroom. And uh, she says, She's on that side! And points to the clean side. <laughs> uh, I want to okay. see if there's any letters, any correspondence, anything. Make me an investigation check, please. Anything. 
that I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> Somebody else I would like to ritual cast to take magic while he investigates the room. Okay. So for 10 minutes, you just close your eyes and start uh, casting. Uh, 18 flat. Flat 18. Uh, as you're palming through the, uh, the drawers in the side desk and checking the pockets of her robes, you manage to find tucked just under the pillow in a very obvious place just a small journal you you open it up and it's written in common there's nothing strange about it and it's mostly just day-to-day dealings in the temple which seem to be very mundane very dull you would get in fact make me an insight check let's see how much you can garner from this journal uh 17 okay with that 17 get the sense that whoever this high priestess was tolerated tetia and uh <laughs> was had kind of come to terms with being much younger and yet in the position of being her superior and seemed to love her work really loved being a high priestess um she talks about talking with people from the city that would come to her. People would come from most of the lower region because the Temple of Alluria, there wasn't one as, until Elder Spire. So people came here to see her and she would not write the things that they'd said to her, but she'd talk about how much she enjoyed her role and helping others reach decisions. Um, she spoke about a stranger that came to meet her and... Uh, started inquiring if any mysterious artifacts had turned up anywhere close by she didn't really give any more details than that because she says that the stranger had been very evasive and then a few days later all that was written was heard a rumour I've got to see if it's true and nothing more okay that doesn't sound pretty. So I relay this to the to the to the group. Heard a rumor, and that's it. And then the journal stops there. Yeah. Yes. Essentially. And then at, it's about this point that Octavius is uh, Octavius's ritual casting finishes, and you open your eyes, looking around the room, looking for any of the telltale auras uh, for any magical items, and you get a general sense of um, divine background radiation if you will from the fact that you were in a temple but nothing is glowing or standing out Mm -hmm. six oh sorry go ahead no i was going to ask if um if what the entry was before she asked about the rumor where she if there was like a diary entry of whereabouts she was it didn't state did you okay um you look very nice today by the way I really like the get-up. Um, Don't be ridiculous. Look stupid on me. No, no, no. I think you're radiant. I think it looks great. Well, I like my bollocks. Well, you know. The issue, um, however you feel. Um, if I were to go and find a rumour about something in this town, where would I go? Hmm. Any of the taverns, I suppose. Any of them. They're all very rumour mill, are they? Well, oh yeah, they will love gossiping. Standing there, drinking their wine, gossiping. It's what they do. do it's true. You... We did that last night, actually, yeah. Actually, I do have one question. Do you know where the High Priestess went on, I looked through the journal, this date? No. That's just what I said to Ripper. That uh, She just left, didn't come back. She said, I'll be back in a few days, and was gone. A few days. But so like she may have travelled outside of Cinderbane. Well, I don't know. Sorry, Six, you'd like to do what? I go, listen here, you old hag, quietly. I go, you need to give us a little bit of that information you have, okay? A woman's life may be in the mm-hmm. balance, and not just a woman, but a woman of the cloth. I don't care whether you liked her or not. We, we need to look into whether she is alive, let alone... Uh, we need to make sure it doesn't matter whether you had a... Can you make me an intimidation check, please? So she turns to you, and even though she's not much taller than Phaser, she suddenly stands up straight. 
goes, look here, young man, you're talking to a priestess of Aluria. You better bloody watch yourself. And just starts hitting you with a stick. I think that's another doesn't... bingo box we've just ticked. Intimidating an old lady in every game that we ever play. <laughs> yeah, someone has to do it. We tried it nice. You know what I mean? We <laughs> lack tried it nice. If I knew where she was, I would have told you. The insolence. Okay. All right. La- last. Um, Has anyone else? Yeah. Before we go, um, uh, I'm so sorry, Tetia. I, I understand. I understand that the respect that should be due to someone in your position. Um, you have a lot on your plate, don't you? Yes. Um, I do. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I wondered if um, if she's if she tra- did she travel normally, and and if she did travel, did the were there certain boots or a certain robe she would wear if she was traveling some distance yeah she never went anywhere unless she was in her high priestess robes these ones are sort of the backups okay um you know no 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 traveling boots no traveling bag nothing she was um nothing with her hmm. no gosh that's strange okay thank you dm can i get a brief description of the clothes again then so the clothes are uh, <laughs> said kind of white robes with golden trim on them. There is a headdress that has flowers and plants in it, and it's clearly a kind of a high priestess style Roman ladies wear. It's got like a golden clasp at the top. Cool, thank you. Gold bangles up and down the arms. Fairly rich looking. Uh, I just want to. Uh, all right, one last thing. And I think it leads on from what Lack said. If you heard a rumor and you didn't want to go to a tavern, you heard like naughty rumor, who would you go to then? Young man, can I confide something in you? Of course you can. I am I am the right hand of Luria now. You may confide in me as you would your own hand. Right. Look at me. Yeah. Would listen, you agree? Listen. That- I'm a I know women old. like you. Yeah, you'd agree I'm a little old, yes. Yeah, you know what comes with old and age? Do wisdom. you know what job I do? Yeah. I'm the priestess of the goddess Aluria. Absolutely. In here every day, tending the, t- the uh, temple. And when people come to repent, and when people want to oh, seek I don't forgiveness... Talk to them. They talk I know. to the high priestess. I know, but you hear and you listen. And a woman Young like man, you, I have never who's heard a smart as rumor you, in my whole life. Who's as smart as you would I know wish I'd heard a salacious rumor. I would have quite liked it, I think. But no, look at me. 95 years old. Never even kissed someone. Definitely. Ridiculous. Like a secret stash okay. of smart books. Under yeah. The bunk. <laughs> do you, you want to. I mean, like, I'll give, you, uh, I'll give you a kiss for information. If I had any more, I'd give it to you. Now stop being bloody rude. And she starts hitting Good you with a stick. Go on. Away! I've got things to do. Can I uh, can I ask if there's a an, another a study or or somewhere like that where she may work? Or... Study? Do you think there's some library or something? This isn't Elder Spire. No, no. no what I you see is what you get. Or... Okay. Wait, um, All right. Uh, I think I think, gang, we may we may have outstayed our welcome a little bit. Um, but we really are appreciative, Tetia. Thank you so much for your time and your expertise and your kindness when you are so. So All right, spiling on a bit now. Come on, just get lost. I've got things to do. Okay. You're the one that asked us for help. Don't get all uppity. Oh, all right, you watch it, young man. You are just get you as well. And lifts up her stick. Yes. All and right, we're going. All of you, may Luria guide you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Okay. All right, let's head to uh, old uh, Minotaur's ass, isn't it? Okay. That's like a good idea. So, <laughs> as you exit back onto the forum. It's still only about 7 a.m. It's very early on. You look through your belongings and you find the writ of passage that will allow you entry into the property in the Ayers. Now, none of you have ever been to the Ayers before. Uh, This is the district that is in the west of Chinella. And it's actually, as you turn to the west, you can just see it's up on a slightly raised hill, uh, which is possibly where it got its name from. And although last night at the tavern you did hear a few people saying this because I've all got airs and graces. Uh, so as you start walking through, you notice that this new region or this new part of town is you'd seen it as you were entering that some of the spires and some of the taller buildings here are white. They are pristine marble and um, 
just your general background magic, your detect magic wouldn't have quite worn off yet, Octavius. You get the sense that there is a lot of very low level magic used just to keep the houses clean. Uh, and they've got red tiled roofs, gated, massive wooden gates, uh, maybe 15 foot wide, uh, 10 foot tall on each of these properties. You can see trees, the first trees you've seen in Cinderbane barely see them just peeking over these low um red tiled walls and you find your way through and can you all just make me mm, an investigation check please because you were given a map so let's see how accurately we can read it six, six. not very <laughs> eight <laughs> five 21 13 <laughs> That's why you always have an int, uh, an int character. So, as you uh, wind your way through the quite wide streets, you notice as well that the clientele walking around these streets are a little better off. You see some wonderful togas. Uh, you're starting to see a few more coloured fabrics. Everyone is wearing quite robust footwear, though, which is interesting. Um, you'd assume, because actually there's still a low level of ash in the streets, and so they're just trying to keep the lower parts of their garments clean. But the top parts are resplendent and beautiful. The lady's hair is curled and coiffured up uh, with intricate tresses and golden brooches and silver brooches and starting to see jewels. And uh, the price of everything, and they still have these little hole-in-the-wall places serving, but <coughs> just a glance will show you that they're about ten times as expensive. And the smell is, depending on your taste, either more refined or a bit poncy. And uh, as you find your way around, most of you are just bamboozled by this uh, very different change in pace from uh, the rest of Cinderbane. But Phaser, with who's kind of got the map in front of her, I'm imagining at this point, just kind of nose in it and is appearing, just these goggled eyes looking round and then back um, with Toots, Toots, just walking and humbling alongside her, uh, you find your way eventually to a two-storey um, sort of villa-esque mansion that is sort of quite near the western wall. As you turn north, you can see up on the very top, uh, there's like another hill at the top there, you see the palazzo, which is uh, the palace overlooking, and that looks huge and massive. It's way away. But as you turn back, you finally find the sign. Uh, that says home of Darius Ventus and outside again are two legionnaires uh, Six um, Octavius these two are your kind of people uh, Excuse me We had from in Mara Yeah, thank you uh, <laughs> uh, ex Excuse me, sir um, we have a uh, writ of passage that allows us uh, into this house uh, for express permission to uh, sa uh, save a patient's life for the hospital. Yeah, he looks, guys. Give it here. What's over? He looks at it for a minute. Turns it over. Looks up at you. I can't read. Can you have a look at this, Marcus? And passes it to his uh, colleague, who looks and goes, hmm. Yeah, no, that, that all seems to be in order. Yeah, right, in you go. No funny business. And they open uh, the gates, and you walk right. into... I won't a crack a joke then, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, if I, had a, if I had a silver for everyone that said that, no, I mean. Uh, and you walk into the car into the courtyard. Now you could afford some books to, to learn how to read, you know? Oh, that, hey! That was the other guy, six. <laughs> oh, they all look alike. Every Chilena looks Ooh. the same to me. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, every every guard, I mean. That... Every Chilean guard looks the same because they all have the same it's outfit, still, is what I meant. What did you not... think I meant? Let's just keep moving, brother. Christine, hey, look, have you seen on. this? Oh. What did you think I meant, honestly? So people. in the courtyard, you see a couple of what are probably apple trees uh, sort of winding, wending their way up. There is a small mosaic pattern that uh, just depicts a scene of opulence and wealth, sort of plants and, uh, you know, grape vines and things. And some steps up into the villa, which is a little grey 
it's uh, it's not quite as pristine as the others. And as you walk in, the door <laughs> creaks open with that. This is deserted and empty. It feels cold. Okay. Um, so, everybody just... Um, I I'm not entirely sure what we're looking for, but um, uh, the... Uh, Imara told us that that his 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 words that he said before he he fell into his uh, um, fits were in in the house they took it. So I'm not sure what it is, but this is the house. So maybe we should have a little look around, because um, I I don't know if they're in the house they took it means that in the house they were and then they took whatever it was away or whether or not he had something elsewhere and then it was taken into the house so i'm not sure so we should probably look for signs of a break-in or maybe something being maybe. disturbed maybe uh, good idea as is now my catchphrase i ritual cast to take magic <laughs> <laughs> um this is such revenge brad <laughs> um <laughs> As I, as we uh, learnt from Seed's song last night, you know about the light fingered uh, teeth. Um, you know, maybe look to see if there's some some like ash, like mi like not like the less ash or something like that, like something that's been taken away, like you know, like space in a shelf. I have been in a couple of these villas before. I'm not going to tell you why, but you can probably guess. And uh, Ripper is going to walk around every so often, just just bonking his uh, stick on the ground, and then moving a couple of more steps, looking for a sex dungeon, looking for a basement. Um, <laughs> okay, you look for us as a basement. Uh, mm -hmm. Brad, can you just roll an Arcana check for me, please? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, everyone else, can you roll me an Investigation check as you just explore the house? Uh, that's oh, it's intelligence, isn't it? So that's only an eleven. Uh, I got a 24. 19. Mm. Got an 18. This dice is on fire. 30, 20. Okay. So I've rolled above an 8 today. You're all exploring the house and you all find separate things. Octavius, I'm going to come to you in a bit. So we start with um, what, just uh, what, Phaser. If, if there's a way of doing it, Sixsmith would like to check to just see the difference between what it, the house was like and whether it's been turned over by someone unfamiliar with the house. That's what the investigation check was for. Uh, so as you are walking through, uh, Phaser, you just find your way. You look at the stairs and think, no. And so you and Toots just walk around on the ground floor and uh, you find a nice little study that's uh, got an empty safe in it. Uh, but Toots is sort of just pointing at the wall and just pokes the wall and a little bit of the wall crumbles, and behind the wall, uh, he manages to find a thousand gold in mixed Ooh. coins of gold and silver, just sat there dripping out onto the floor. Um, it was a dirty 20 for Seed, I believe. Um, is it okay if while looking for the signs, Seed will also keep an eye out for any sign of small creatures that might be living in the house, so mice, spiders, bugs? Make me a perception check. I can see where this is going. <laughs> ooh, 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 that's 22. Uh, we'll get there. So as you're wandering <laughs> around, um, you head in to, or you head up the stairs and you attempt to find what you assume is the bedroom. And uh, you look and you find a small book again hidden under the pillow this no one in chanela knows how to hide anything and uh, you find that this is a journal okay and with your perception check you do see like a small mouse scuttering all across the floorboards i would like to cast speak with animals on the mouse of course you would uh, so again you reach out and this sort of icy Magic pet kind pal, of lands <laughs> on the thing. And this mouse is just there looking at you, suddenly freaked out. Hello, my name is Seed. Hello, Seed. What's your name? Sniffles. It's very nice to meet you, Sniffles. I was wondering if you might be able to help me with something. Not 
cheese. Oh, so if I give you cheese, you'll help me. No cheese. You know, I have a feeling I might be able to locate some cheese. And uh, Cedar's going to reach inside that shirt and remove the cheese that was secreted in there at an earlier Fully point. Fully matured. Fully matured. When trying to disguise the fact that they weren't eating it. Oh, that is quality. In the lovely hot weather of Cinderbane. Aged. So these tiny little paws reach out. Cheese! Cheese! Cheese good! So, in exchange for the cheese, could you perhaps give me a little bit of information about things that might have been happening in this house? So, uh, Zniffles finishes. No cheese! But no information, so no more cheese until information. Oh. Big I... go, no cheese. Big go, gone. But so there was one big living here. One or many big, just just the one. So one big, one and big. How long do you think the big might have been gone for? No cheese. I think this is going to take a lot of cheese. Okay, come with me and I'll get you more cheese. I'm going to uh, see if it reaches out their hands for the mouse. Persuasion check, a mouse. Fair point. <gasps> it's a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it is a 17. <laughs> Mm, better be cheese. And that crawls onto your hands. Okay, we're going to go and find some more humanoids now, who I believe may have access to cheese. <laughs> cheese. And uh, we'll come back to that in a minute as you now start walking around the room. Now, did anyone else get over a 15? I did, I got an 18. Ripper. So, Ripper, you... Gong, gong. And the floor springs up. I uh, knew it. I knew it. He's a dirty, di he's, uh, he's got secrets. <clears throat> so as you uh, descend the little stairs, stairs, ladder, I couldn't make my mind up, stair ladder into the Slatter. cellar, <laughs> Slatter. Uh you find not a sex dungeon, Aww. but just an ordinary cellar in which there are bottles of wine, some aged cheeses, and uh, some kind of hanging salamis and other deli meats. Sounds and... a little bit like a sex dungeon to me. <laughs> it's better in every way. And uh, then there is a... Like a gent's den. This is clearly somewhere that uh, he would come and recline and drink and eat. And you see the small stack of mm. books. Um, and could you make me an investigation check down here? Of course I can. I'm the worst person at investigating. Oh no, only got 13. That's enough. Oh. Uh, so, kind of, there's a pile of books that's clearly just collapsed, and you see small spiders kind of scuttering off them. And uh, underneath, you find what looks like a mysterious puzzle box. Hmm. It's fairly plain, but it's got, you kind of go to pull the lid off, and the lid just doesn't come off so you try the other side and it's you're fairly quickly deduced that this is a puzzle box of some kind mm. all right uh anything else down there aside from some salami cheese and there's just some books on landscape gardening is there anything do any of the wine bottle the, like the they said there's was a wine rack corn in there i'm sorry but yeah like, there's definitely landscape is, yeah. gardening book like there's definitely like cover ripper can look through it um <laughs> No, is, I, I, do, I does, the does any of the does any of the wine bottles look like they have they're particularly dusty? Like, what, like you turn them and then there's a secret room appears. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You, well, let's call that an investigation check of these wine yeah. bottles. Yeah, because like yeah. double secret room is boring. Oh. He's got like a room. That, a secret that's what room I'd do if I room. if I had a secret room. I'd have a secret room in a secret. I, room. My die we cocked would. on a fifteen. I got a seventeen though. That's all right. It's a wine rack. Cool. All right, all right. That's, 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 when you're ready that's my me done. Check. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, 
I do. Sorry, what was your Arcana check earlier, Octavius? It was only at 11. That's fine. So you sense some form of something in the house. That's it. It's so unusual do that... Do I have a direction or is it like residue? Uh, it, it's it's hard to quantify. I would say that you, in your time scouting, you would be at least familiar with, say, um, abjuration and destruction magic. Uh, but this is not either of those two, definitely. Anything more than that, not without role, no information. Uh, you get the sense... So you just start walking around waiting for it to get stronger. Uh, and then all of you, by the way, as are walking around, just see six uh, see Seed wandering around with a mouse in their hands. Um, are you going to stop any of them, Seed? I'm going to pop my head up from the cellar. Ripper, I wondered if you might happen to have any cheese on you. You see, I have found a small being that lives in this house and would like cheese in exchange for information. Uh... One sec, and he pops back down, and then you, you just you just hear, huh, and he just lofts out an entire wheel. <laughs> it just lands on the knee. And like a massive wheel of Parmigiano just lands <laughs> yeah. there. And... and it's got the comedy like cut in it as well. It's got, yeah. like... <laughs> and what you see as uh, you look down at your little mouse friend is, we saw anime eyes earlier on Phaser. <laughs> These, uh, you know, uh, like Apu's greed eyes in uh, Aladdin when he sees the ruby and just cheese jumps off and uh, just just it swims into Swan the cheese dive. <laughs> and just see them disappear literally into the cheese wheel okay in hindsight that might have been slightly too much <laughs> cheese but I'm sure we can work with it are you okay in there you this... need me to kill this vermin for you? No, I'm no, no, no. Good at killing vermin, no? So Not yet. This, this mouse, um, so upstairs in the bedroom, I found two things. I found this journal and also the mouse that is now inside this wheel of cheese. Um, the mouse definitely remembers what they describe as one big living in this place. And I'm just, I would like to see if they saw anybody else or anything else but i'm now going to have to try and get this information in between mouthfuls so it's okay too big if they saw too big so okay. the mouse sort of pops its head out at the other side has it got has it got a little piece of cheese for a hat it does now and <laughs> uh they take oh too much cheese okay so while you're taking a pause Let's think again about the bigs that you might have seen in this house. One now, big! But do you remember recently, was there any other occasion where there were more bigs or different bigs in this house? Yes! Was it recently? Yes! Was it since the usual big had been gone? Yes! It's not these bigs right now that you're referring to, is it? Yes! Uh, okay, no, no, no. Not not these bigs, not us bigs. Different bigs, before us. Yes? Okay. Now, if I held up some fingers, could you identify how many bigs there were? Were there this many bigs? This many bigs? This many? Oh, th this many big? No, wait, how many bigs? Okay, so six myth. Um, you get the sense that this mouse is just copying. Just doing what I'm what doing. He draws Crazy his... impressive <laughs> paw control for that he draws, his, <laughs> he draws his weapon, and Johnny, uh, being the DM, will understand this, um, but I'm wondering if an animal can see a part of six myth that no other uh, human can see. Um, and if he can intimidate the mouse. Into old lady, the... tiny mouse. Right. Make me an intimidation Yeah, yeah. Roll. I cannot fail this one. I failed with an old lady. I cannot <laughs> I'd fail. I'd love it. Oh We're all gosh. hoping you do. It's, it's palm reincarnated. 
that that's terrible that's fine <laughs> it's palm reincarnated <laughs> i um, can't even intimidate a mouse well you say that but it is a mouse yes so you <laughs> lift uh, your blade and uh mouse... have a sort of spectral almost like a spectral aura of sorts that comes yeah. off of me i think at this point mouse who's been looking at siege really carefully goes <laughs> looks at you and then just jumps off and scutters away oh no <laughs> I mean, six. Ironic, now, ar- she was ironically weird, communicating. The other way around. They was communicating with the mouse. My only regret is that I did not kill it before it scurried away. That's... Now, with uh, a hunch, Six Smith at that point walks off. And as he walks off, he walks into uh, what was clearly a uh, walks kind of past the study that Faze had found the gold, still on the ground floor. And you find, as you sort of lean against a bookshelf, that the shelf just swings in a bit with your earlier investigation roll, and you find a hidden office. I shout, yo, this guy's baller. He's got two hidden ones, cellar two and hidden. an office. Oh my check, God. Check if he's got a secret room in the secret room, brother. Because that's I what I'd do if I had one. <laughs> I check, um, I check. I do an investigation check to see if he's got a secret room within a secret room. Maybe an investigation check. Room. And then if he's got a secret room inside of that secret room. Is, is my that detect magic room? still rolling? Does it It's still rolling. Natural 20 plus one. Room. Natural 20 plus one. Nice. You check this secret room and there is no additional secret room in the secret room. But yes, Octavius, as you enter, whatever that weird thing is, now that the bookshelf's been opened, you can sort of sense it stronger. You still don't know what it is. It just feels weird. Um... Please be careful, there may be traps in this room. And Six, with your investigation, as well as not finding another secret room, (laughs) what you do find is uh, clear signs of something being tossed and broken. And there, in the footprints, looks like signs of a scuffle of some sort. Uh, and a tiny little bit of blood. Um, and there is in? a, like a, uh, like a display case that had a velvet cushion on it. And the velvet cushion is empty. Can Lack come in and try that arrogant thing where he looks through the tracks of the scuffle and replays the battle? Uh, like both <laughs> Aragorn and Prince Humperdinck both at the same time yes uh roll me a survival check please thank you that's the time 15 plus 6 21 you very quickly pieced together that there had been some kind of break-in and uh that whoever it is had come in through the bookshelf and had quickly surprised the other person who you would assume to be the noble whose house this Mm -hmm. is and both had been reaching for something in the cabinet you seem to see that someone fell and that's where tracks then get very scuffed so that kind of acts this out for everyone they knew where they were coming though because they came through the bookcase means they knew that it was here and the person was hiding um do we know what is there anything in the uh, um, in in the case to to show what might have been on the cushion? Is it is it heavily indented? Is it well? There, this is where the detect magic is just starting to wear off. But in its final seconds, you get the sense that whatever was on this cushion felt wrong. It's um, sort of like a humming dissonance. That's the only thing you can like liken it to like that feeling of when you're sat very still in uh, inside working and you hear a wasp by your ear and you turn and you can't see the wasp <laughs> it's that sense of or you're driving oh and there's a wasp in the car and you can't do anything about it because you're driving no because that, that's I, I think that's I the point where you die just than let this wasp just yeah this. <laughs> absolutely but it's that sense of something is in here and i could just ignore it but it's very uncomfortable rather than the sheer blind panic of driving my car into the and, middle of a motorway and it looks like the thing fell off the the thing and was broke off the cushion and was broken or? there doesn't seem to be any remains of anything broken on the floor no okay 
Okay. See, I mean, I ask, can I've you read this journal of yours and s maybe control F or whatever you do and find <laughs> uh, something about a cushion? I don't understand what control F means, but I can certainly open it close to the back so that we can see maybe what they wrote most recently. I believe it's an army thing. It is, it is. You control the battlefield in an F formation and <laughs> cut right to where you need to get to. That's, that's very much an Endyrian thing. I have no idea what he's on about. Well, maybe we can, at some point, we can swap stories. I think it would be very useful to get some tips from each other. So you're going to start reading the journal? Yeah, and I think Seed okay. will, will very much kind of head for the final pages, kind of assuming that that might hold events of okay. more recent days. So as you start reading the journal, you quickly get the sense that... Um, name just disappeared from my head been a long day that Darius Ventus the person whose house this was as well as being a nobleman was a uh, hunter of antiquities uh, sort of a bootleg archaeologist if you will and he had there are lots of entries about him meeting with various people to um, ascertain various uh, items from them or to try and sell items on uh, nothing particularly remarkable that you would recognise. And then in the final few pages, uh, he comments very excitedly that something had been found far to the south and brought up. Uh, to the and south? To the south. Okay. And uh, in some old ruins. And that the person who brought them had alleged that they'd been travelling through the wastes for weeks, which he did not believe. But they claim that this artefact uh, was from the wastes. The description of it, it's, there's a long detailed description of it in his book, as there is with everything. And it seems to be, or it was described as, a, um, like a shimmering crystal. He said, at one moment it would appear spherical and then shards would almost seem to appear out of it. It uh, looks like an opal trapped in ice, dazzled by sunlight. Uh, it had this strange nature that he couldn't quite ascertain. And he'd been, he'd asked for a scholar to come from, Sin, uh, to come from Elder Spire to actually assess it. Because it was so unusual. <clears throat> Maybe... Um uh maybe this artifact and the priestess and the high priestess have something in common right maybe what what were the dates can we match up the dates between this journal entry and the last one sure there's about three days apart and just to check um is there a name given for the scholar no it just says, I asked us, I've written to Elder Spire and requested a scholar. Uh, you, know, you know, you said it feels wrong. Something feels wrong in the magic. To Octavius, yes. Because he had detect magic up. Would you, would you have revealed that, Octavius? Uh, yes, I would have told everybody what's going on in my head. Oh, I'd, like to use, I'd like to use my divine sense, please. So I've just unlocked mm, it. Of course. Ooh. Uh, mm, so I'm going to sort of put my hand near where the, the plinth is and sort of try and focus and try and see if I can, um, yeah, see what, I ha what kind of evil I can detect. Okay. So as you reach your hand out and you touch the velvet cushion and you channel your newfound power of Allure and you feel again this warmth of life suffuse you, and it channels through. Um, can everyone else just make me a perception check? Oh, for f well, I, hold on. First of all, I didn't say I touched it. I said I put my hands near it. 19. You've done it now. You've done it now. Five. Fifteen. Sorry, two. What, check, what check do we have to run? Perception. Okay. Oh. We should have known. We should have known. We Eleven. all should have known. We all should have known. We all should have known. So we all should have known. Anyone over a twelve uh, notices that as he reaches out to touch the cushion, it's sort of not there, and then back for a second, and you think, 
that's weird. I don't know, it's been a weird morning. And then you can see this divine magic, and as more divine magic flows in, it's sort of glitching in and out of existence. And then other objects in the room start to glitch, and things just starting to move around you and lift up into the air. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. No! Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> Boo! Ghostbusters shit's about to go down. Oh, man. Well, it was either oh. that or it was going to be a fucking mimic, wasn't it? <laughs> Still, Still could, could be. be. Yeah. <laughs> didn't actually touch the cushion. Yeah. No, well, uh... Yes. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> Becky, that was a fantastic um, uh, impromptu uh, ditty. Uh, with, with, you know, music and story and performance. Mm, very fantastic. creative. Wonderful way to end good. Again, marvellous. Yeah, yeah. Good show. Giving Sam Regal a run for his money. Yeah, <laughs> and Ryan, what, what, a, what a absolutely fantastic uh, oath. oath, wonderful moment. It's good that you can, like, your character's now in that, it, like, an openly paladin, openly identifies as paladin. Yeah, I openly <laughs> identify as a paladin now. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was a really, really good session. Um, let us know what you thought about it. Let us know uh, if you think you could out-diddle um, Hold on. Seed in did, terms did of uh, no, are, not we, are we using no, that word? Sorry, Let's that definitely not word. use that word. I went on a guitar. Let's not I went on a guitar. Start that conversation. I went on a guitar. You know. Actually, I've just I've just picked up um, I've just picked up the new Assassin's Creed, and they have like feuding. I think it's called where they like rhyme rhyme off against each other. So you know if you yeah, like rap battle, battle. Sort of, yeah, yeah. Like rap battle. it is the OG rap battle. So if you think you can out rap battle Seed. Uh, let us know on our socials. That's um, Blood Song Party on Twitter exactly. and Blood and yeah. Song on Instagram, and join and on the Facebook page as well. Yeah, yeah. Also, there's not enough votes tabulated either way about whether I'm going to shave my head. So I love these luscious locks. I love I've, this. I've literally voted 147 times for you to <laughs> shave your head. So, <laughs> I, I, I'm just I desperate not to do it. So, too, I don't so know. You I'm keep bringing it up. I don't feel like you are desperate not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always nice to have a reason to do something that makes you look like an idiot, eh, Brad? <laughs> I'm talking about these moustaches. <laughs> what are you talking about? Brad looks magnificent. Brad Look is magnificent. Mm. Is I want to give him a navy jacket and send him out to defend the skies. Yes, and Sean's is also a mustache. The only thing that bothers me, Sean, is this grey, apart from the millimetre on the left side that's not joined up yet. <laughs> oh, listen, it's net. I, honestly, this took about six months. This bit is the last to fill in. It, it looks, looks like joined taunt. up on the right. It's just that left side. I'll, I'll just get some mark balance it by, by yeah. yeah or eyebrow yeah. pencil eyebrow seriously pencil. eyebrow pencil is your friend mm -hmm. yeah like <laughs> these That's are not all natural the lines. <laughs> <laughs> they're normal um, human eyebrows human eyebrows yeah. <laughs> Is next Monday? Is next Monday the last session that's within my member? It is, isn't it? It is. Yeah. yeah. It'll be the that's final the penultimate one. The yeah. final day. Well, so we get yeah. to see it might the, not actually the... be the final time. Depends on how. Oh, you're starting to like it. it. If you oh, like it, Brad. I think it's so fetching, yeah. Brad. I think you should <laughs> keep it, Bradley. <laughs> well, he he has to shave it off as part of the the ritual oh, right, of November. Yeah, I have to shave it off. Mm, um, yeah, that's also true. Gosh. And it take yeah, it will yeah. take me another month to get it to this point. So I don't know. Yeah, but you're not going out anywhere, so you know, you've got to <laughs> go home that. to my parents, so we'll see. Very, very true. <laughs> yeah. My mum. Thank you, um, Johnny. Thank thing. you, thank you, Johnny, for an excellent you, session. Yeah, that was a fantastic you're very welcome, session. everyone. I uh, um, hope everyone at home has enjoyed it. And uh, we've, we've done the socials. Yeah, well, you can catch, I mean, Dan, what happens with these after we um, after this yeah, session? I start pretty late cutting these up into <laughs> podcast format so that you can have them in little bite sized pieces, mm. a little bit like the tapas we had today. Um, or the wheel of, for the cheese. The wheel of wheel cheese. Of cheese. Uh, give you nightmares. Every every day we release a different one leading up to the next stream. So uh, thank you everyone for listening. We look forward to seeing you next week. And as always, may the Great Mother guide you in all that you do. <laughs> <laughs>